Oh, okay, okay, yes. okay. So, yes. First of all, it's so great to see everyone. It's it's been it's been a Wednesday. Oh, it's been a Monday of a Wednesday. Am I right? Oh man. So while we were uh, getting ready to go online, you just saw everyone pointing. We were playing a game. If you could point before we go live and actually be pointing at someone, you get a bonus hero point to start today's episode with. And I believe that means everyone here gets a bonus hero point before we rock and roll. Now, uh, before we do anything, I want to start off by saying thank you to our amazing TD Joe, who is doing this remotely and is just an absolute dedicated badass. Thank you so much, Joe, for putting us on camera, for doing your thing. It's, it's amazing. Uh, secondly, uh, and I told Wes this was going to be a surprise, congratulations to Elanufeld on getting engaged. Hey, congratulations. Yeah, awesome. our friend Elanufeld, congratulations. I saw it on Facebook. You look like a very happy, lovely couple, and I'm so happy for you. Happy for you both. It's so exciting. Ah, uh, everyone else, welcome to Edge of Legend, Season 2, Episode 25, I believe. It is yeah. 25, yeah. Sure. That's so. It's hard yeah. to do math. And that's what I do for a living. I do math. What the hell's wrong with me? But let's do an <laughs> intro. Was that? Oh, my God. Uh, AK Warlock, thank you so much. AK, I love you with all my heart. AK is in my Sunday campaign. What? Oh my God, AK, so awesome to see you. And thank you so much for those subs. That's amazing. Keep oh my tuning. God. Oh my God. Oh, what? It's it's going so fast. Oh it's my a God. hype train. We got to hype oh my. I got a hype train. Hey, yo. Now, as always, if you guys can get me level five hype train, I usually do something kind of crazy and silly, like make bold promises. That's how Ra's rave party got started. That's how... Um, <laughs> I forgot how a bunch of, oh, Merry Wives of Woodward started because of Level 5 Hype Promise and a bunch of other crazy twists that happened in, in universe. So thank you so much for the subs. I'm going to change tactics or not to, to the, the, the conversation words or I will never get off this point. So that being said, my brain is a jumble. Let's do a quick introduction to all the players here. And, and oh my God, it keeps going. AK, you're breaking my brain, my dude. A hundred percent. Is that a is that level cool? four? hundred percent. Oh Somebody my else got to help this person out. <laughs> yeah. I love AK in the chat saying, you said level five. We, we did. We yeah, sure you put did. the challenge out there. So I did. We sure oh my did. True AK facts. Wizard said, I answer. Okay. Well, then, you know what? This is going to be interesting. I might make a bold promise or a big, big twist reveal. We'll see what happens. Thank you so much, AK Warlock. I'm going to keep plugging away or else I'm going to forget what I'm supposed to say. Oh, God damn it. My brain just keeps melting every time with these subs. Yeah, thank you, AK Warlock. Thank you wow. so much. Hey, uh, subs. So amazing. We're Holy this shit. much closer I than Super so Fireball. <laughs> <laughs> Super Fireball. <laughs> Terrifying. <laughs> All of the mice across Adelphon will be extinct. <laughs> yeah. No, they're no. cute. I don't, I don't want that. Just little mice going, it's still me, sir. It's still me. All right. So uh, I'm making a quick note here. Okay. So um, I'm going to move forward or else my brain is never going to recover. Let's introduce you to these amazing players, starting with uh kylie kylie please tell us who you are who you're playing what your pronouns are sup i'm kai or i go <laughs> i love you i love you so much or i go by kylie it doesn't matter at this point um i play shionavis and elvin ranger in case you didn't know um and we go by she her yeah yeah well, next up after that, we have Sydney. Please, Sydney, tell us who you are, who you're playing, and what your pronouns are. Hello, my name is Sydney. Um, I play alone in the Half Elf Cloistered Cleric. Both of our pronouns are she/her, and I'm real happy to be here. Woo! <laughs> All right. Uh, next up, we have uh, Randy. Randy, please tell us who you are, who you're playing, and what your pronouns are. Howdy, howdy. I'm Randy Alvarenga, and I'm playing Lothier Van Linsen. Uh, he's our Druid human. Uh, and we, we both go by he, him. Wonderful. All right. Uh, last and certainly not least, the fireballer of the Ethernet cable. Uh, Wes, please tell us who you are, 
uh, who you're playing, what your pronouns are. And I'm sorry about Fireball and the Ethernet cable, okay? There was a mouse near the modem. It's not my fault. Uh, hi, guys. I'm Wes. I play Drake on Targear, uh, the Duskwalker Magus, and I'm excited to hopefully get my spell slots back so I can blow more stuff up. <laughs> Never happening. No. How Never dare again. you, Randy. How dare you? <laughs> Is this PvP? Ah, uh, well, um, it is now. <laughs> it is now. Never mess the man's fireball. Um, so that just leaves me. My name is PJ. I am the GM for Edge of Legend and Nat Twenty Productions, official on Twitch. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, and I will be playing everyone else. So, without further ado, here's the recap of what you missed last week, and it was a freaking doozy. Uh, so they had the boss fight against a demon named the Liar's Joke. This demon not only uh, is partially for the reason that Dragon died the first time, but possibly the reason why his father died, too? Wearing the face of his dad to taunt him, uh, they began the fight. But also, this demon is on the list of seven powerful demons that Shionibis has to hunt down and kill the safety of her home and of course the rite of passage becoming queen of said home the fight was brutal and bloody and uh the healer went down at least once and it was a uh, uh, the magus lost all their spell slots and it was intense i didn't have spell slots going into that fight pj i yeah, had used them all blowing the town up so you say like it's a bad thing as a gm i'm just i just take great joy in that that economy it was wonderful no, I really enjoyed blowing up the town. Thank you for letting me do that. <laughs> what I do. So uh, with the fight finally vanquished and heartily won, uh, bloody but not beaten, uh, the heroes try to find Lord Puck, the young halfling lord of the seven noble families that has been hiding this whole time in this really unusual sort of laboratory called the womb, hiding behind one of the many pods with unusual liquids and fluids and lumpy things in them uh you find this young man sitting down not very verbal remind remembering that she has a door that allows her to go in the psyche of other people uh you put the door on his brain and go back and relive the memory of the crimson carnage a Halloween event last year where demons basically enacted the purge in the city of Enchelator. And it was up to the most violent, the most uh, intelligent, and the most uh, expeditious to survive. And you begin to go through every memory Lord Puck had when he was just a starving street urchin who, by some brutal and horrible means, survived the night of the Crimson Carnage and was made a noble of the city of Enchelator. And with that... Though the pain of the memory still lives there, the power that it could hold on someone's mind is gone. And we come back to you now with this young halfling boy, now a noble, with no memory except for what you allowed him to recover and survive through. You're back in the, the laboratory called The Womb. Uh, Wes is sitting down next to Lord Puck with an arm around them, holding them. Uh, you're both there giving comfort as the door goes back to Alona's hand. Now, I don't want to ruin the moment, but there is loot that the boss dropped. And if you'd like to loot the boss, I can give that to you now, or you can continue talking to Lord Puck. Maybe a second. Is this loot in addition to his heart that I tore out? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I'm going I was to say bold of uh, you to assume I yeah. wasn't going to loot the body. <laughs> yeah, I'm not looting the body. I'm talking to Lord Puck. <laughs> um, okay. If anybody sees Dragon, he's still holding Lord Puck, but his head is uh, Dragon's head is against the wall, and you see like kind of tears forming in his eyes. Okay. Ilona's going to kneel down next to Dragon and Lord Puck, and um, she looks at them both, and she says, hey, you've both been through a lot. Lord Puck, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that we scared you earlier and that this person was trying to hurt you, but you're, you're okay now. And um, 
and Drake on. You did it. Yeah. We did it together. I, um, I had, I had hoped my father was still alive. I hoped that there was a chance that he lived through the battle and now I know he, 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 there's no chance for me to see him again. So I think he'd be proud that you closed the circle on, on the demon that sort of caused it. You were the one who helped bring that to an end sure he's looking down on us and smiling on you. Thank you, both of you. I, I, I hope so. I, you see like this kind of look of guilt, like wash over drag on space and he just, his eyes go to the right to the floor. I, I hope that he's watching over my family in my stead. You don't really talk about your. Space. You don't really talk about your family much, Dragon. There's a. Uh, there's not much to tell anymore. They wouldn't even recognize me if I showed my face. So. When I woke up in this body, I realized that they were better off without me, and chose not to go back when I escaped. Well, maybe that's the choice you make now. It's not the choice you have to make forever. We still have a long way to go before we get where we're going. And who knows, maybe we'll figure out a way where it all works out. I hope so. But <clears throat> and he kind of is like forcing a smile. But uh, you know, if that, there won't be much left if we don't save the world, right? And so I guess we'll we'll push on and do that, and then maybe I can figure out and see my family if if we live through it. <laughs> I, I sort of hit you playfully on the shoulder, win. All right, win. Wow, and he kind of like nudges both your back. Like, I know you're gonna survive. You can turn into a freaking bear. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't blow things up like you can. <laughs> uh, he, he sort of uh, looks and sort of kicks the dirt. But uh, I think our friend here, and he sort of looks back over at Lord Puck is also dealing with a lot that I think, and I sort of kneel next to him and, and say, you are so much more powerful than I think you realize you are. Ah. Lord Puck, uh, still kind of staring in the middle distance of the rusty metallic wall in front of him still kind of hugging his knees tears still wet on his cheek but no longer running he is kind of well what can i say i had um i had help from really good people and it's my job to help them back well I think you'll have a much easier time of that without, and he like nods toward the corpse of the, the demon. Like, I think you'll have a lot easier time without him running the show. Uh, perception check, PJ? Uh, for what? Um, I was under the impression he didn't know what happened to him. Perception Did check. us going into his brain somehow give him um that back 
which is what I was trying to avoid. Um, Out of character, I think we we did unlock some of those memories, but we didn't venture too far forward, so we didn't see the more horrifying elements of it. Got it. So he doesn't know he murdered them all. (laughs) Forcefully? Forcefully had to murder them? Forcefully had to murder them. Ah, that is... Haha, take that, Queen's Court Games. I did not roll badly today. (laughs) (laughs) Also, hello, QGC. Um, uh, You said 28? I did. Yeah, you get the vibe that he 100% uh, doesn't remember everything, but he definitely knows that he had amazing people help him through a difficult time. <laughs> yeah, we won't, we won't worry about the memory manipulation part of this <laughs> whole ordeal. <laughs> Look, also, from what you remember in the vision, when Magadon the leader of the nine hells basically told him, congrats, you survived our, for lack of a better word, our purge, our hunger games, you survived. Uh, So now you're a noble and no one's going to have any memory of this. Like the level you're going to have to be at to undo the mental manipulation of four of the lords of the nine hells, you're going to have to be at least level 20. Yeah, no, I don't want to anyway. Or four level fives. (laughs) i love that one level 20 or four dicey level fives with nothing to lose (laughs) um so lord puck stands up kind of like brushes some of the rust off of his uh pants and says all right um i need to go and so working on the next um, the next program, I'm trying to make it so we can give back to the people of the sea. I don't know why, but I can't help but feel responsible for the poverty and and and, and the vandalism that they're living in. So I'm I'm gonna go do that. Um, anything else you need from me? Uh, I don't need anything, but maybe a recommendation. I do know that there's a few very special royal families that have quite the treasury, and I'm sure that they would be more than willing to donate if asked properly. Lord Puck kind of has a cheeky grin cover his young Trubic face as he goes, you can see in his eyes, he knows he's picking up what you're putting down. Uh, He thinks for a second, and he says, well... Unfortunately, I am limited by the family to which I am subscribed to as far as coffers that I can donate. The Rascuchin family, though, is one of the big families of in Shelator. I'm sure we can come up with something amenable. I'm sure we can. Great, great. After Give all, me... I do know them quite well myself. Paul, just step in your toes. Give me a diplomacy check. Okay. Sadly, I don't think Dragon's diplomacy skill is very good. Uh, <laughs> it's a 13. 13. Okay. Okay. Let me make a quick note. I'll determine what he's able to get for you. And to be clear, I was offering to help him by breaking right, right. into He wants to break into the like other that. families. And oh, <laughs> my dummy thought was that you wanted something from the coffers. You no! want to break in? No, no he wants not. He, he wants, wants the other Gregon families Gregon absolutely too, wants to too, fuck these royal families over hard and oh. like help the poor people out. Now that I'm, I'm picking it up even better, okay, that's okay. my bad. Uh, <laughs> instead of that, give me... Um, uh, do you have warfare lore? Uh, lore warfare? I have lore legal. Lore legal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> lore yes, legal. Use that. Use okay. legal lore. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. I'm here reporting because I want it to. I want it to be good. And you have two because you successfully pointed. And I'm here reporting again. All right. Oh, this dice is going to dice are show. You, it's are going you to sure? dice show. Yes, I'm sure. All right. The game hates me today. Uh, so that's an eighteen. 
18. Okay. Um, so with the 18, Lord Puck just kind of smiles and goes, I'm limited to what the Rescuchin family can offer me. But that does not mean the head of the Rescuchin family um, cannot influence the other families for a good social standing. I think we have a real good plan here. We'll be right back. And he kind of like, his little halfling legs run off. Uh, everyone give me uh, 2d10. Give me a d100 roll. Ooh. Everyone? Everyone. Oh, wow. Ooh. Yeet. Ooh. Yeah, which, one's, which one's first? <gasps> okay, that was a good one. Like that. I got a that 60. Was good. 69. Yeah, nice. nice. <laughs> Look, I, I got to say this. That should be worth more than 100. <laughs> Is it worth more? Yes. Is it numerically higher? No. Oh, I got a 91. 91. Ooh. Damn. That family. Whichever family that is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What you got from each you? Uh, so I don't know how percentage dice work, but I got a 10 and a 9. Okay. So if it's a, if it's a 1, That's 0, and a 9, that means it's a 19. Perfect. No, but it's a 0. It's a zero. Oh. I landed on a 0. Oh. It's a 10. So oh, the 10's place is a 0. And you, so I think that's a 0. So it'd be 0, 9. So it'd be 9. Yeah, the, the pretty much the percentage die, Wait. that's on zero. Yeah, what, so, what did you have on this one? Because this one for the zeros should be two zeros. So I, right? Hmm. Yeah. Percentage die? Right. Yeah, percentage die should have two zeros on it. Yeah. yeah. So that means if you hit it, yeah. if you hit a 10 on the D10 and a 90, that's the, that's 100. Yeah. We're all in together because whoever uses the D100 percentage die, like it never happens. No, never. Apparently, Hold on. Uh, PJ does. <laughs> this one time. The I like, one I like time. to throw the dice you never use Who uses into the it? game. Actually, you've used it once before because we had the same conversation because we were all still confused. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time I've ever used percentage dice. I don't know how the fuck this works, y'all. <laughs> That's, That's actually fair. Okay, I got uh -huh. a 60. And a zero there. All right, so it's a six zero, a six perfect six. sixty. What you got for me, Sydney? I got, I got a fifty. Fifty. Okay. I can say I just played uh, Call of Cthulhu, which is all these dice, which is the only. Thing I know how to all do. I'm saying is we need to roll percentage dice more because on my D twenty, I rolled a five, then a four, then a seven. For the. Oh the no. More legal. Mm. Okay. That's I'm just hearing you need to buy new dice altogether. Yeah, that's what I'm hearing. Yeah. You need to leave it out in the full moon tonight so it mm -hmm. charges. Yeah. Yes. yes. So Charge your dice. Charge oh, your dice. Actually, I can. This is a crystal. That's so freaking cool. These are crystal oh, dice. Reap Psyche got me these. Nice. Thanks, Thanks Reap Psyche. Now, Thanks. this is why I was having you all roll. So I also rolled a D100. Okay. I was having you all make one solid number. And I was going to multiply that by the D100 that I rolled. I rolled a 21. You are able to get, I'm sorry, you are all able to work together to get Lord Puck to, shall we say, reacquaint the people with 5,670 gold coins of the nobles' riches. Excellent. So while the nobles are maybe hurting a little bit, like other 10 coffers and might have lost one full copper or coffer, the people are finally knowing the surplus of food. They're finally knowing a little bit of peace when it comes to everything else. While the town is still vandalized from, of course, the purge breaking through everything, at least they're not hungry, they're not scared, and they have money. Um, this is all very good, but... um. Ripsaki brings up a really good point in the chat. It's something that I was going to get into this game, but I haven't had a chance yet. Now that we've done a really good thing for society, can we uh, figure out why there is a cloning lab in the basement of this family and um, why um, all of these bodies are floating in goo? Yeah, I, I also want to know about the ugly dragons. <laughs> <laughs> Very, very good. All solid questions. Let's see here where I put that. 
There it is. Perfect. So his 50 notebooks, his pile of notes. <laughs> yeah, come at me. And also, if you want to help, please go on to Nat 20 Production on Twitter and say, I want to buy PJ a notebook. And I will go, with it. here's how you can help me. I need so many freaking notebooks. Um, but here's what happens. Uh, you look around and you see uh, an entire hallway flanked with easily 10, 20 pods. You see, the, of course, the liar's joke, demon corpse, and you see a bunch of loot on the demon, including a giant sort of book with a very unusual seal. It's not latched, but it definitely has a seal on it. You can see the arcane, almost demonic, fiendish energy coming off the book. And you're going to, uh, 10 bucks says, if there is any information on what is happening, this demon who says he was looking over you while you were in the tube would probably be in this book on his body. I'm Want checking that read. book. Yeah. Want to read over, over Lothier's shoulder. <laughs> okay. Do I recognize okay. the seal? Give me a religion check. And why didn't it really fast? Someone turn on a light. I'll be right back. I'm going to turn it off. Turn uh, crazy into it. Also, I speak and read Abyssal. Ooh. That's helpful. That is very. I got a 23 if PJ asks. I'll be right back. All right. Okay. Got it. Hello, PJ. Yes. Kylie yes. rolled a 23. She will be right back. Perfect. 23. I will let them know when they return. I think they can still hear you. They have headphones that are wireless. That's right. So while while uh, Kylie's walked away, you recognize this sigil as uh basically the key of, of devils and demons. When you were uh, being raised, your mother showed you a bunch of different demonic sigils. Uh, they base themselves off of the Lord, the devil Lord of that realm. And then of course the hierarchy down. This one is based in route to Ravon and breaking down. You see the different like devil Lords and finally the demons underneath them. I read very bad. I rolled a four and um, whatever that is, it's going to be less like pretty low. So I start trying to read the book and I don't do a good job and hand it to, uh, to Dragon, <laughs> who, who seems to be better at it. Actually, could, could anyone here give me an arcane check? I, I would have rolled a 14. Rolled a 14. Thank you so much. Okay. So you're trying to open the book and you realize you can't get the book open you're literally like forcing with all your strength and it won't open and, but as you're exerting force you see the sigil grow like glows brighter and brighter with more force you put into opening the book i hand it to uh to Drago. i i can't get this open all right let me give it a shot cracks knuckles <laughs> uh okay So, and what is that? Strength or athletics? Can you give me an arcana check? Oh, arcana. Uh, so, yeah, that's a 24. Okay. As you look at the sigil, you start seeing it's actually written in a way that functions kind of like a puzzle. And as you kind of place your hands onto it, start moving your hands like you're adjusting a Rubik's Cube, you're kind of aligning certain things up. And in a few minutes, you break the magical lock that was placed on this book and as he's working the puzzle you just see a smile start creeping on dragon's face and you like hear him mumbling to himself I freaking love puzzles <laughs> just like <laughs> messing with them. and he like pops it open. ah I, I got it oh huh. that was fun do we have another one uh we have different no. one. another right. cursed book for you to open well i I mean, sure, if it's got a puzzle on it. I like puzzles, all right? Don't give me that look. Note taken. Uh, all right, I open the book. Okay. So you open up the book. Each page is written in out of character. Do you, does anyone here know Infernal or Abyssal or any I of those know languages? Abyssal. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> so it's, it's written in the script of the fiendish and the damned of the nine hells. But what's interesting is that as you're reading it, you see this little, this magical uh, 
a ray of light pop up that says, do you wish to read this book on silent mode or noisy mode? Looks around. Mm -hmm. Noisy. The book begins to shake and rattle and the pages begin to flip <laughs> loudly like the flapping of a bird's wing till finally it falls out of your hands, slams on the ground. <laughs> and this image of the liar's joke <laughs> pops up in bright light. <laughs> they would damn me for my vanity, but after all, what's a demon good for if not being a little naughty? Day one. I find myself surrounded by absolutely idiotic people. I love killing them. Stops them from being stupid. <laughs> but then there's this young boy. He calls himself a man because his father is old. <laughs> I was killing, oh, nine, 12, 20 idiots. They kept running at me. They never learned their lesson. And then the boy showed up with that stupid old man and they tried to fight me. <laughs> I have to admit I'm pretty proud of this one because I turned to the old man's father in the middle of the confusion when he didn't know who his old man was and who I was, I took advantage of it. I forced my hand through his gut like a butcher's knife through a pig. I killed him in front of his old man. And the worst part was he had no idea idea who was really killing him was it his father or was it the demon they were tasked to kill so then i turned to the old man and i said two for one special and then i killed him too the tragedy's old man didn't put up a fight watching his son die in front of him kind of broke the old man's spirits uh yeah dragon closes the book and hands it to lothier and just kind of walks away you hear as the book kind of continues. I, I like am going to run the other way with it. Cool. So Lothar, you hear the book continues. Day, oh, I don't know how many thousands now it's been. I've been hiding out with this royal family as a malefactor. I figure if, if they're going to have a culture of demon infested warriors, why not hide in plain sight? Well, the great Lord Rasputin lost a dear boy. Not uncommon. And so they put me in here to watch over all the bodies. They learn something from some, I don't know, some elf from somewhere else in the world about genetic operations. <sniffs> Never quite bought into the nonsense myself, but I was tasked with watching over the tubes. Gods, it was boring. And then one day they got more information, a breakthrough in this Arcana technology. If souls exist on multiple planes, why not find the dear idiot that died and put him in a new form? Keep the Rescution line strong and all that nonsense. <laughs> so we began the rituals. Like the elf taught us. Get the body, put it in the tube, fill the tube with the goo, keep the tube and the goo alive, and if you burn enough incense, enough hallelujahs, you get yourself a new baby boy. Well, we didn't get the right baby boy. Not even a bit. <laughs> no, I watched for months over this tube while this lump of flesh curled its fists open and blindly reached out into the goo that it was in. Day, I don't even know what it is. I love my life. It really is quite hilarious. <laughs> the soul that we got, uh, we thought we'd try the damned, couldn't find him there, so we thought we'd try the one of the dead. Makes sense, right? But the boy that we got from the dead, that's the day one boy. Oh, I forgot his name. I was the one that I, the, the, the one I butchered killed, I can't quite remember. But I watched for nine months like a proud mother, watching him form in a body that wasn't his own, coming into be. Oh, and I fed him. I fed him well. I gave him all the nutrients he needed to grow strong. I knew it wasn't the Rescuchin boy, but how funny would it be to present to Lord Rescuchin the first person that ever I truly killed with joy in my heart. 
It was truly a funny sight. You should have been there. I guess you are because you're reading my book. <laughs> I should really publish this thing. It would be a bomb ass read. What am I doing? <laughs> Liar's joke. You're getting ahead of yourself. Finish the book first. And at that, the book stops when it says, Dave, I don't even care anymore. The boy left some years ago. I've been looking for him forever. I decided to quit now. Take this cushy gig until the tour plummets into the sea. Who knows? And guess what? Blue-skinned, white-haired, joyous dumbass walks into my town. Man, we really are connected, you and I. Hopefully I can find you. I can't wait to kill you a second time. Here's hoping. I uh, throw the book on the ground and walk back to the rest of the party. Um, Alona, Chionibis, uh, Dragon. Yeah. Are you all right? No, but I will be eventually, I'm sure. All right. <clears throat> well, uh, and I recount sort of what I heard. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna spare you guys <laughs> the reenactment there, but um, uh, it, it seems the family was trying to replace their lost son. That part I knew already. And they got you by accident. I think these tubes are there attempts to continue to try to get the right answer? But you know what I think? I think it was some kind of divine justice that you were brought back. You were able to take down that goddamn bastard. Well, I wasn't alone and like looks to Shanavas. but I'm glad he's dead. I think we should, in this rotten experiment, no good can come of this. Way ahead of you. And Dragon's just gonna produce flame and hold it in his hand. I'm assuming that whatever's in these pipes might be flammable. So we might wanna leave before I do this. But first, I think he, I'm going to want to search the body and make yeah. sure that we get all the spoils of war. Good, good, good. Uh, can you take? The, can I take the armor? Uh, even no, unfortunately. Okay, I was, was going to say, even if I can't wear it in combat, potential wanted to try something with it. But yeah, good. absolutely, absolutely. Um, so yeah, you do find there's, there's more loot on uh, the liar's joke. Of course, you found his memoirs, kind of discussing what it was like being you know, a lackey of the, the Rascuchin family and what it was like basically raising you your entire second life in secrecy, basically with the joyous idea of killing you again. Um, you also find uh, a greater demon mask, a ring of lies, a greater choker of elocution, and a very unusual shard piece. Can I do an arcane and check on that? Yeah, I would like to do that as well. On the shard piece? Yeah, go ahead. Roll yep. what you want to roll. I hate my dice right now. 28. 21. 28. Damn. Okay. Um, this shard, for starters, is not the full shard. It definitely looks like it was cracked off of a greater collection. This crystalline object, uh, piece of the of the greater object uh, appears to be a vessel for something it has a great power in it but the power seems to reside more on something hands on i ain't got no clue what that means but uh <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah, me either 
but there's something else out there that it came off of that's pretty dang powerful probably uh I, I, uh this is just a question out of character uh which is about the book mm -hmm. are are there ways to like destroy unholy things with like holy in pathfinder uh absolutely yeah um okay, cool I mean, so while it was a demon inscribed book and demon magics kind of uh, sealed it away and, and turned it into one part memoir, two parts, you know, holophone, uh, it's still a physical mundane item. So you can destroy it however you want. You can oh, cool. use holy magic. You can just set it on fire and wait. All right. I'm going I'm to let uh, Dragon have that on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, so yeah, uh, Dragon's going to take the book and just kind of toss it into the middle of the room. Anything else anyone wants to do before this place goes up in flames? No, I'm going to kick the, the demon just one good time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, because that was a dick thing to do. <laughs> yeah the, the whole the whole timeline of that book was a big thing to do <laughs> um yeah so then uh I'll, he'll dragon will draw a sword and um like try and slice through one of the pipes uh as you cut through the pipes it bends away from its riveted joints and you see this horrible sludge just start oozing out uncontrollably and you see kind of coming from behind it, this gas just jettisoning from behind it. You immediately see this alarm go off. This kind of magical red light starts just sweeping around the whole room. Who here speaks Elvin? You two hear an Elvin voice. Uh, and it says effectively, um, the promise has been jeopardized. The promise has been jeopardized. Please fix the damage and prevent contamination. And it goes through that cycle again and again. The promise has been compromised. The promise has been compromised. Please fix, uh, or please, yeah, please fix the damage and prevent uh, contamination over and over again. Uh, before I use produce flame, I'm gonna drag the body of the malefactor out, like toward the entrance. Okay. Uh, and is his sword still there? Or is that gone too? Oh, it's gone too. It's a manifestation of his uh, fiendish magic. Okay. Um, and then just drag his body uh, out, and then in with his blood on his finger is going to write on the wall it's just like um try this again and i'll be back and then oh. he's going to use produce flame to ignite the gas oh. give me a your choice arcana or roll to hit with your spell uh i'll roll to hit with my spell okay come on dice please <laughs> 30 20 30 20 now thankfully this is just an unusual hard to place arcana sludge and some gas you shoot it suddenly the gas that's just you can see producing out of the tubes becomes a flamethrower as the gas continues to pump through the tubes the gas coming out now fully becomes a blue lit torch as a sludge catches on fire, but still producing sludge and still succumbing to gravity. The room begins to fill with on fire, hard to place goop. I need everyone to make a reflex save to run out of a room filling with on fire goop. And as the pushing gas becomes a giant fireball. I thought we had already like started to leave the room. I don't know. You said you lit it up. I'm just saying oh, this yeah. is getting I, bad I was, fast. I was saying I, like we should all leave, and I thought we all like got out of range because then I dragged the body out of the room and then lit it up. But 
I mean, we can make reset. I, I made my reflex save and I got a nat 20. So I'm just, I, I apparently was okay. still in the room. I I oh, good for it. you, Randy. <laughs> yeah, I, get, I finally rolled high. It's a 32. Nice. Okay. Okay. Hero point. Join I got a dirty 20. Dirty 20? <laughs> okay. Oh, no. Is that a nine or a six? Just kidding. Hold on. Read the math. Thought it was a six. Like Sydney, you. I have two hero points. You can have one if you need it. Oh, I'll use my second one. We, it's okay. I was going to say, I, Dragon definitely would not have lit it up with anyone still in the vicinity. Right. Just Maybe there was there. blowback, I'm guessing, from outside. I mean, we'll I, justify this I stuff. just wanted to use my 20. Just <laughs> saying, he's pretty skilled with fire at this point in his life, okay? <laughs> a lot of fails. Oh no, oh, Kylie, no. what's your what's your roll? 23. 23, okay. All right, and with my 20, instead, can I put up a wall of water? Yes, absolutely. Some people? absolutely. I'll, I'll use that spell slot. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. I already so, almost died. Let's see, with my 32, can I help Alona just like pull her along as she's like staring intently at the flames? Apparently. <laughs> so you you shoot the fire, it starts to build and build. The room starts to fill almost like knee high with on fire goo. At this point, you're running, and then the the whole uh tube starts to shake and rattle this ominous sound. You can see all of the tubes lining the ceiling break from their rivets and they start to shake. You have caused a horrible chain reaction. And as you finally get out, Lothar, you put up a wall of water just in time to have the water shoot into your face as a fireball goes rushing out of the lab as an explosion shakes the noble quarter of Inshelator. But the good thing is the lab called the womb is now completely raised and gone. <sighs> Oh, I feel better. How's everyone else doing? Great. Now, how are we going to get out of the city? Well, at this point, I think we just walk out, right? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Why? Do you guys want to do more stuff here? We can go try and rob the royal. No, 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 no. Absolutely not. No, 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 no. no last time I did that, I was in jail. And that yeah, was, but, it was like, well, but we killed the guy who saw you. Gross. Yeah, yeah. But like the last time we were just supposed to be here for a few minutes, we were just kind of stopping through and we were trying to get somewhere else. How's this? How's this? Next city we go to that has royal family, then we can rob them. How does that sound? Oh my God. Well, but they don't worship. They might not worship. <gasps> no. <anyone. laughs> That's they might fine. not worship. I mean, I, I'm, uh, I know I, it's look, not as, like, I'm open fun. to it. All right. I'm open okay. to it. If they're, if they're a dick royal family, I'm down for it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Most star. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah I mean What's... that's very true. No. <laughs> like you're a royal, you get it, right? Well, okay. All right, well, let's not go that far. All right, I was born into a like a royal's like test tube body. <laughs> you know, I don't. It's not I'm, quite I'm the same. Say that counts. Does I still say that counts? Really? I think I mean, so. Yeah. All right. Fine. All right. The body's royal. The brain, not so much. You know. I, yeah. I mean, you've seen how I don't the like the brain, them. not so much. There is PJ no question for you. Yeah, I have an answer for you. The vo voice, the elven voice. Can I tell what region that was from? Mm -hmm. I love the way you asked that. Um, <sighs> your choice. Heraldry. Or society? I'm going to go society because it's a little bit higher. Yeet. Can I do better? I'm scared. Nah. 28. 28? Pretty good. <laughs> um, what do you mean? <laughs> so you happen to know from many long talks with good wine with your friend, Senator of the Adolfon Senate, that this accent specifically originates, originates from the white north, the north continent just above Adelphon Prime. Uh, when we get to a stopping point, I would like to send another letter to Bowen. Okay. Just at some point. Ooh. Yeah. 
Yeah, remind me when get and give me further detail, and we will go into that then. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. So, with that giant explosion, unless there's any other questions or things you want to glean or do, I guess the question is, where are you going to go? Yeah, we got to leave. Yeah, we're out we're, of we're here. Going out of here now. Okay. Out now. Okay. So. The dragon looks like dragon. <laughs> um. So, before we like leave town, leave town. I have I knew it. just one stop to make, um, if possible. Uh, and out of character, I apologize, PJ. I'm adding in some flavor stuff. But so there was a um, when I left town and escaped, I may or may not have robbed a small bakery for food. If we can it's toward it's toward the exit if we can i'd like to stop by and just give them some money for what i stole back then if it's even still there okay okay um sure sure let me make a quick note of that now let me ask you this after that is done the question still rises up you wish to leave how the way you came in was from technically center where you are in the west aka you entered the east to leave would be the west but you'd ba you basically would be going back to where you came to or now i don't really remember but when you're in the sewers you found also you could leave south by southeast and leave that way along the coastline out via the sewer line so which way do you want to go I mean, we, we could, if you guys want to be sneaky about it, we could go back into the sewers again. Um, mm -mm, mm -mm. No, there I'm, is I'm literally a, a god down there. Why would you want to do that? An I'm evil just demon look, god. <laughs> look, if you, if otherwise, we could just try and walk out of town. I don't, not sure how many other malefactors there are, but you know, we uh, killed their leader. We should have taken its head. No, I don't be like, really, I, like don't and he like pulls us. it out. Have I head. have his heart in a bag. Mm. All right. I, I, regardless, I don't think that was their leader. From the way this town looks and the way those malefactors look, there's at least one of them for some of the other families, right? Yeah, but he was like a, what, demon lord or whatever? Uh, maybe of, of the one that he subscribes to. There's other demons, right? I, I look yeah. over at Alona. <laughs> No, he's right. That this guy is chump change compared to the other people around here. There's malefactors for every royal family. He's not the only one, and he's not the most powerful by far. He's just the one that sucks the most for us. Um, yeah. Dragon, uh, we can follow your footsteps out of here um, in a in a way that's sneaky that doesn't involve going into the sewer, or hopefully, maybe if we're lucky, they'll be so distracted by the explosion that they're going to leave the exit. Well, I mean, we could, we could also just, you know, hop on like birds and bats and, you know, whatever other cool creatures that you guys have that, you know, look here and I don't. Uh, you know, one of these days, one of these days you're going to let that a go. a little better. Um, <laughs> yeah. Not today. <laughs> Today's not that day. <laughs> but I do not feel comfortable bringing my bat into the city because I do not want it to get shot down because it's a bat, a gigantic bat entering a, a city of Fair. of demons and right. shit so um no bakery and then just we'll leave bakery and bounce okay bounce. there's not a bun boys in this in this city this city the city does well, not deserve a bun boys yeah, there's not a bun boys here as far as i know unless it, you know it was opened recently but it's it's not bun boys they don't they don't do cake wheels or or or, or bread wheels but it's mostly like loaves but they do a really nice like honey rosemary loaf I know because I, I stole several of them. <laughs> and then I may have gone back again for another one. What? I thought you were stealing on your way out. You yeah. came back? Mm -hmm. It was it Hey, was if they're that it was good. Really good. All right. They also had a nice like rosemary sea salt. They like rosemary. Okay. See, I'm much more partial to like sage, but like that's just me. No. I mean, they might have something. I don't know. Who knows if it's even still there? I could have burned down in whatever the hell the night you of should, despair that happened. 
We should bakery and buy. Yeah, I'm 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 okay with that. Bakery now, and buy. to clarify, out uh, the way you came through the front door, or through the sewers into the south exit. We're not going to the sewer. I, I, I'd rather take our chances to do the front door. Okay, I'm going to be honest. So then. Stealthily. Stealthily, absolutely. Yeah. So then, what I'd like to do then, since you're all moving together and you're going to do a quick stop off and there's a bit of chaos because the holy noble quarter is now partially on fire, uh, let's have, and you all get to decide, which one of you is going to roll a stealth check with a minus two for the whole group. Oh. Dragon, what do you have for stealth? <laughs> Look, I'm going to be honest. It, I don't know if it matters what my stealth is <laughs> with my rolls. Uh, I have a plus 11 to stealth. Does anyone know oh, he that high? It. I have a 12. Oh, she might miss. Go. Yeah, I, thought it was I also have both hero points still. Yeah, left. I was going to say, I don't have any hero points. Yeet. Ooh. That went out of the box. Hero point. That was a three. Oof. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, thank you. Let's just switch dice. Let's just like switch it yeah, up. Yeah, I, 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 I'll preemptively give. I was so close to a natural 20 and then it rolled a two. One more hero <laughs> point. Because why not? You know, I have one more. Like, I mean, it's I fine. That's a 23. 23. Okay. And is that before or after the minus two penalty? That is a 21. <laughs> 21. Okay. <laughs> uh okay so wait you are yeah do i get my plus four bonus with my cloak is it up i don't think she ever took it down because i think she killed him in the duat yeah oh that's right she did kill him in the duat which that's got to be double hell for a demon um yeah absolutely 25 okay yeah. okay so you are able to find the pastry shop, which the windows are boarded up as the whole thing is covered in scorch marks and the front door has been beaten off the hinges. You can see because even where the hinges would be, the brick and mortar has just been destroyed off of it. But you see the, the owners of the shop working to kind of clean it up with, with push brooms. Uh, once you give them the gold, they look beside themselves with with your generosity and they go in the back and they pull out this burlap bag and like they're a little cold but this is the last crop we made before i it's the last one we made please have it thank you so much we can use this money to rebuild yes of of, of course um <laughs> Dragon is gonna like be smiling, but then take a quick look in the bag to see if it's like moldy. <laughs> it's it's hard and stale, but not moldy. Uh, you know, if you kind of like put it in some like hot water or, or you know, kind of put it over a fire, you're gonna you're gonna get some you're gonna get some life out of it, but it's not fresh. Okay, all right. Uh, thank you, and thank you, uh, and just like hands them the gold and. And 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 leaves. Uh, I'm gonna say I gave him fifty gold. Okay. That trust me for for normal citizens that is a lot of money. The five thousand six hundred and seventy they're gonna get later is gonna blow their freaking minds out of their skulls. <laughs> um. Okay. And you're leaving out the way you came, right? Uh, from your position, be westward out the front gate. Okay. As you leave, you see. A mixture of emotions is half the town is running around in terror. Like, oh my God, the Novo Quarter's on fire, chaos, anarchy. That kind of response that an entire citizenry who has forgotten the trauma of surviving the purge suddenly has this knee-jerk reaction when something's on fire going, oh, this reminds me of something. And the other half, who's just sitting there really smoking cigarettes, go, I don't care, let them burn. Putting, you know, it's kind of ashing out to the side. The thing that gives you fear is while there is some human guards running around trying to be helpful, the malefactors are marching through the city, kind of just scanning with their helmets, turning left and right. And as you fade into the crowd, blend in broad daylight with this massive group of people running this way and that, 
you follow the flow and you're out before any malefactor can see you in the crowd. Certainly helps that the veil of Dewat has blessed you all this day. Yeah. So you are out of Inshallah tour. The question now, as you're trying to make your way to your next destination, is where where are you going? What direction are you headed? Et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera, et cetera. That is a good um, question. Where are we going, guys? Well, we were heading Didn't south. We yeah, we were heading south, which is why uh, PJ was trying to get us to go through the sewer to go more south. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. know. I'm just giving you options. We were going south. And so now we're going to go around the city and and learn that sometimes maybe it's better to go around the city than go into the city because we just wasted two days inside of the city, almost dying. Still actually very good, though, because we did murder someone who did deserve to die, which is very bold for Alona to say. Um, but um, not a person, though. Not a, not a person, a demon. Really, mm-hmm. really bad. What's up, Lothir? Um, can we rest? Yeah, I, I would need a nap. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. All Absolutely. Right. So once you head south, you get a little uh, deeper into uh, a very dense forest. Thick oak trees and vibrant, verdant uh, leaves that block out the sky. You can smell how rich the air is and how moist it is. It's almost like just being here gives you more energy, more oxygen, more moisture in your body. Why drink water where you can absorb it? And in this forest, you find a perfect place to set camp for the night. Kylie, how dare you? Uh, anyway, so, sorry, I thought you were laughing at something else. So, you find a good place to sit down for the night, and we start a campfire scene. This is where we're going to take our five-minute break. When we come back, we'll come back with the last half of episode 25. And don't think that I've forgotten about the level five hype train. Oh, no, 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 because you're going to hopefully love, question mark, what I have planned for when we come back. See you then, everyone. What? Goodbye. Bye. What? Bye. What? Bye. What? Bye. what? It's fine. Plans? It's fine. What? What do you mean? It's plans. plans. What kind of plans? It's a it's, it's a surprise plans? plan. It's the kind of plan you'll know about when we come back from a five minute break. Because I think you're gonna love it. Well, I mean, I do love that. that I have my spell slots back. So, oh uh, well, that's yeah, true. Yeah. And I like that I'm not at 17 HP anymore. You were that 17. That is a good thing. I was at 17 at the end of that battle. Wow. Come on. I'm at 40. Doing? I almost <laughs> died. That's true. That's I was true. fully prepared if you died. I knew exactly what I was going to do. I was going to use my jar that I gave you. That can bring yeah, you back to stability. That is way yeah. better than me sticking in her, her in one of the pods. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my funny, gosh. Not lie. No. Is I'm not ready for blue alone. <laughs> <Blue Alona. ready. laughs> that was the only option that Dragon has to heal anybody. It was like, I don't know, stick her in the tube. <laughs> Listen, I mean, I I don't I don't hate that. I don't I don't hate that. I feel like that'd be a really good journey. But it's like, you know, whenever you're accidentally hit by like wear or something and you're like, this is not what I had planned for my character. <laughs> did not want my goop. character to be You did not plan rat. on goop? <laughs> I did not plan on goop. Does anyone I'm, plan on goop? I, no, I, I don't I mean, plan on goop, but that's just me. So much goop. I, don't, there was a lot I should of stop talking about goop. goop. <laughs> How many times can we say goop? Goop and talk. That's a very good question. Goop, goop and talk. talk. <laughs> I plan on goop uh, quite often. Good all, job, Reed Psyche. Psyche also said goop. Look at yeah. that. More goops. Is it yeah, goop? Is that goop chat? Additional goop chat. Goop. Oh, that is a hundred percent our raid. Oh our raid God. call today. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> goop, 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 goop chat. Goop chat. Oh my God. Group chat. Nah. Goop chat. Goop chat. Goop that chat. does sound sick. Hold on. I have to change. I have to change our Edge of Legend um, group chat name. Goop chat. 
All right. Well, we'll see you guys yeah. after the break, though. Yeah, I think. See you guys. Yeah. Hello, everyone, <laughs> and welcome. The best way to make sure that we get back to the live screen is for me to do something embarrassing. Works every time. All right. So anyway, uh, thank you so much for the uh, break, and let us pick up where we left off. So you all have uh, finally escaped the city of Inchelator and left it, although a bit more on fire, probably in better hands. Uh, so now we have a brief uh, campfire moment where you all can sit around the campfire with your NPCs, of which you have Morel and Tobias with you around the campfire. Uh, We're useless in the boss battle. (laughs) Useless. Snapping outside of the city. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) Tobias is like, I know everything about this place. I am staying way the hell over here. And then doesn't even go in. Um, So, uh, yeah, you're at a campfire. Now you can decide to do, uh, take shifts to see who's watching for the night, or you can all kind of hang around by the campfire and just catch up on life. Hmm. Is there anything that we should be worried about that we should take shifts on? I don't know. It's up to you. It, look, you There's you are only as defensive, as paranoid as you are. I mean, I love the forest, so I will uh, prepare like I'll talk to some plants. I'll, you know, uh, keep a watch for a bit. Once, so once like that's true. Yeah, once our like little cap is set up, Dragon is literally gonna walk toward the campfire and just fall face first into the dirt and just be like, "I need a nap." I thought you were gonna say you fell face first I, into the fire, and I'm like, "No." no. I, oh, you me. know what? I'm going to. <laughs> He's near the fire, not that I, close. I'm gonna uh, lean over to Morel and Tobias and be like, "Hey, Dragon's had a a, a bit of a rough day. Uh, I'm sure he would love bro time and <laughs> drinks." So, if I can even remotely hear that, lots of drinks. <laughs> so you see Morel go. Bro time. Right, bro time. Um, I think I know what I'm going to do. Yeah, I got it. And then you see you see Tobias who goes, a time with bros. Bet. And then he walks <laughs> off into the forest. Now, eventually, they come walking back, the two of them. They pick up Dragon and they just <laughs> carry him off into the forest. Uh, um... Um, uh, Morales right. is shouting uh, I wasn't told that you need time with bros and then Tobias goes hush don't say words bro time and they <laughs> he's just gonna like rest his head on, on Morel. it's like <laughs> alright well, I've accepted <laughs> all right. so divide this into two scenes now we have bro time off in the forest and we have everyone else by the fireplace so it's girls' night with Lothier. Hey, you know, where, why is it Lothier with us? What? Yeah, well, I don't know. First of all, well, okay, you said bro time with. Oh, do you want to be in no, bro time? I, it's totally fine. I'm I'm okay wherever I am because I okay, have friends. Better- Look, bro time is go time. There's always an invitation for bro time. I just want to make sure that you're in the place you want to be in. I am. I am. I'm okay. having fun. Okay. Okay. I don't get to hang with uh, Chio as much as I I would like to. So. Okay. All right. So uh, just so the scenes can be uh, fair and even, I'm gonna put some time on the clock, allowing you all just kind of like role play and catch up and talk and do whatever it is you want to do. No pressure all the pressure now hey, you guys you guys have fun i'm gonna go hang out and drink with double pj <laughs> <laughs> when my npcs betray me god damn uh right so <laughs> i would put 15 minutes on the clock for you all to kind of talk and catch up and role play so when you're ready your scene starts now all right Ooh. Oh, sorry. Uh, the uh, the three of you being uh, Sydney and Kylie and uh, Randall. All right, love that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. It's all great. Oh, good. All right. All right. I'm pretty sure they're gonna have fun 
Dragon's probably not going to remember tomorrow. That's, it might be for the best, you know? Yeah, definitely. It's been I, a long day, I think, for all of us. And I don't like to drink as much as the three of them. So I just figured it'd be more fun to hang out with you guys. Yeah. Aw. Yeah. I, mean, I don't think, I, I mean, I didn't have anything planned. All right. Alona, did you have anything planned for the night? P- plans? Who had time to make plans? Was it in between us almost dying in, in a womb? Or or was it on the exhausted walk here? I have no plans. That's a also really dramatic name to give to a room. Like that's yeah. yeah, like honestly, yeah, that entire city just kind of has the worst vibes. Absolutely. Like mm-hmm. at what point did people say this is an okay thing to build and put together? They they just need to raise the whole thing to the ground. That's what I think. Yeah. Well, if yeah. you're talking about bad cities pj do we have a map <laughs> fully formed no but what are you what are you looking for um the next city we're hitting is Ferramus, isn't it if you were to check your map you see that there is a nearby town called Ferramus. speaking of not great towns um we might be Getting another one not so far away from here. Have you been to this one before? <sighs> so growing up in Or, you learn a few things. Well, growing up in the temple, you learn you learn about, you know, the surrounding cities and city states and where particularly to stay away from. Um, most of my history. Growing up was, of course, focused on the conflict between Acadia and Orr because that was what was most prevalent for me growing up. But of course, I learned a little bit about Brack. I definitely learned um, the most minimal details about Inshelator, um, and also minimal details about Faramus as well. And unfortunately, in those respects, I wasn't necessarily taught what to stay away from, just that I was supposed to stay away. It's kind of like when you tell someone not to do something, but you don't explain to them why. It's kind of really bad, actually. They, it should it maybe explain, give people all the information so they right? make educated Otherwise they walk in the, in the door to, to the untold relics of great power, and then they almost die. That, okay, listen, Lothier. What? I I told you guys not to do it. I told you not to do anything stupid. But did you explain and... why? Right. That's exactly what we're talking about right now. There was no explanation as to why. We couldn't even really tell what the doors were. I'll be honest. It, locked. it wasn't too locked. I was able to get in. <laughs> <laughs> you know... He has the point. I, I kind of wish I didn't, but regardless, I think you're right. But this next place we're heading might be bad, and we don't know why, right? So we just go on the outside, like like we're doing right now, right? We don't need to go there at all. We're safe. It's fine, right? So yeah. how many days would it take us to go around? Right. PJ? Survival check? Um, I have For a good who? one of those. Hmm? For Ooh. city? Oh, for anyone who wants to know how long it would take to walk around Fairmiss. You have a general map of it. You can kind of guess. Uh, 21. 21? Okay. Oh. 29. 29? Okay. Um, Fairmiss is very, very large. Uh, and for reasons that maybe only Alona may know, or Shonvis, you might know tangentially, there's a very weird uh, thing on the map, a very large barrier to the city of Ferramus, which will kind of offset you. Walking around the entire city so you never have to deal with it will take maybe like a day's journey and increase to a three days journey to get further south. Hmm. 
Now, if we can manage to get through the city without robbing someone, maybe it'll be fine. Can we not just fly over the city and call it a day? Right. What if we just like don't even like don't even acknowledge it? I um <laughs> the air over Faramus is what is considered a no fly zone. Nothing flies over Faramus. So oh. we'll fly around. Does anything be- sounds better than walking? I'm so over walking. That's my legs hurt. Alona, my legs. But not hurt. all of us have flying creatures, and that's the sad part. That's you know what? If I right. bet you, if Dragon were here right now, he'd say the same thing. We are talking to our union about getting birds because we don't have any, and we need them. The adventuring union. Uh, yeah. I, yeah, that's what came to my mind. So yeah, yeah. What's uh, who's in charge of the adventuring union? <laughs> uh, Trilogamus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Trilogamus. Yeah, yeah. That, you know, I think person. I've heard of them. Yeah, they're uh, very uh, sturdy um, in their convictions. There you go. They believe all people deserve birds. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think you know I what? heard him uh, do a public speak one time, like public speaking. Oh, yeah. yeah. He was at that thing, remember, Alona? At the thing. At the thing. At the place? The thing I, yeah. With all those people. <laughs> You're right. See? Awesome. <sighs> oh, my God. Um, I can't. I can't. <laughs> Damn it, Wes. Listen, Wes, why do you have to be so funny? <laughs> but, For those of you that those don't, know, don't know, yeah, Wes put Wes put in our private chat because his name is Tree Logamus. Uh, they would W O O D uh, fight for their members. They would. <laughs> Oh my god, hazards and hijinks. Tree logamus is rigid, unflexible, and smells of cedar. <laughs> <laughs> all, all true statements. <laughs> all true. All true. And I heard that about them. They have their own cologne. Yes. Now, if you all want to keep the scene going, we can. If you want to end it now, if you feel like you had a good time, we can end it now as well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's much else we can talk about. Tree. Just know that birds or flying creatures preferably a dragon at some point oh no dragon oh. got to you <laughs> luthier what it sounds cool it's a cool Sweet idea boy. We'll i mean die. okay actually so, this time wait no but but listen listen it's it's kind of like this right we've killed a, a demon we've already destroyed a, a a monster that killed one of our friends and survived right that that's mm-hmm. pretty epic we're about to try to stop an entire prophecy from happening. At that point, why not? So, so you think you're mature enough to have a pet dragon? I, I don't, uh, you know, I feel like I would do what I could to take care of them. And I would take them for a walk every day. That, that's a big responsibility. And I'm not going to be the one that walks them every day. That I understood. And you won't have to. Me and Dragon. We, we can take care of them. Uh, hopefully we have our own because I don't want to share. But And I don't think Dragon would either. But we'll talk about that when we get to it. How about that? Just just let's not say no. Let's just leave the door open. Let's put a pin in it. Let's put a pin in it. That's a, that's a good way to say that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Uh, so if you don't mind, I'm going to end the scene unless there's anything else you, you want to do because you got some great stuff nope. going on. To wanna, okay. Nope. So while this conversation is happening, let's flash over to what's happening with the boys night out, or should I say the bro time in the forest. 
Now, Dragon, these two gents, these two uh, champions uh, of the world, drag you out to middle of the field where you're in this, uh, like a 10 by 10 clearing. You see three massive uh, jugs, like urn, like, mm, let's go with jugs, uh, filled with some unusual liquid. You see uh, in the center of like the, the foresty kind of area, um, uh, boxing gloves. And uh, last but not least, you see kind of like a stump to the side. Tobias and uh, Morel make their way behind the three jugs. Uh, Tobias places his hand, boop, boop, boop on all three. And then they say to you, you see, you see uh, uh, Tobias goes, I'm really excited. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go first. All right, friend. You just had what we can best describe as, yeah, yeah, a shit day. That being said, here's how we are going to handle everything. We are going to have three different chapters of bro time. There is the trusting moment where we are going to confide in each other. There is going to be the combative moment where we get out any excess energies that we'd need to through violence, mostly wrestling and boxing. And then there's going to be the stump of more talking. We're going to drink about it. We're going to fight about it. We're going to talk about it. And we're just going to have a nice, good, solid bro sesh. Um, I'm not going to be fighting because I'm too pretty, but I will be getting you drunk. Morel's going to be fighting you because he's not pretty at all. And Morel's like, uh, hey. I mean, I'm not wrong, mate. And then we're going to hang out and have a good time. uh, I'm going to just say this. Alona finds him very pretty. Alona is basically a nun. (laughs) (laughs) And exactly. And how pretty do you have to be to convert a nun? I would imagine not very. I don't... Listen, listen, listen. This is not what we're here for. We're not here to judge alone as taste in men, no matter how subpar they may be. We are here to make sure bro to bro to bro that we just get this day handled, yeah? So without further ado, Lothir. I'm not Lothir. You're not Lothir. He's somewhere else. Yeah, he is. Dragon, uh-huh. I hereby challenge you to a drinking competition. Pick up the entire jar. We're going to chug as much as we can before we don't feel our lips anymore. Sounds good. It won't. It, it's not poison, right? No, I've I've turned it into. Wait, do you want ale? I can make it ale. What do you need? No, no, strong. Whatever is strong. It's strong as anyone drink it. As strong as anyone to kill you. Not okay. Not that strong. Maybe. Just all right. Under, all right. Just just under the kill mark. Okay, hold on. It's been a really shit day. Understood. With with, with some up and up moments, but. Yeah, I pretty much got it confirmed that my father is actually dead. So yeah, drinking, lots of drinking. Oh, welcome to the club, Dead Father Club. You and me. We're, we're going to have a lot to talk about in the talking stump. Anyway, and he puts his hand on the jars, and you can see the liquid, which is kind of like this crystal amber, start to change into a dark mur- uh, murky fluid with a, with a heavy foam head. He is basically taking these giant jars, fill them with water. He has shifted them from an ale to what best can be described as a cream stout. And he's like, drinking time is now. He grabs one of these massive jars. He kind of, he looks in the eye and starts tipping a little bit as if to suggest, drinky, drinky. Yep. So Dragon's definitely going to go pick it up and uh, start chugging, I suppose. <laughs> All right. You're chugging away. And as you're chugging, Tob- Tobias sees this, sees you doing it, gets a little closer, grabs you by the collar, pulls you in, locks dead eyes with you, and keeps chugging face to face. Uh, I would like to do the same and hand the, hand the third one to Morel. <laughs> as, you, as you're like doing that, you're grabbing the throat, Morel just kind of grabs it and goes, I thought, right. And he starts <laughs> drinking it too. Uh, you're having this moment, lock eye to eye with Tobias. And as you're like drinking tangentially, but looking into each other's eyes, you're having this moment where you're kind of speaking beyond words. It's this really weird bonding thing where you're challenging each other, but you're actually kind of also being vulnerable at the same time. Uh, And you can see Tobias just has this moment of like a weird humanity. And you can see that he trusts you in his eyes. What are you, what are you trying to say back to him right now? Uh, 
it's almost appreciative. Like, thank you for being my friend. Thank you for this. Um, it's pretty much it is. It feels nice to be to have a family again. Once you have this moment spoken between eyes, Tobias is the first to give. Puts down the drink, slams on the ground this massive uh, uh, jug, and he goes, "All right, put your drink down. Put your drink down. You have to fight, man. You have to fight." And he grabs you and just looks you in the eye, two hands grabbing you by your collar, looks you in the eyes again, aggressive, but he's reaffirming that that trust is real. And then he kind of throws you off to Morel, who at this point during the during the drinking has taken off his armor and is putting on his wrestling shorts. Uh, and you know, it's his wrestling shorts because, uh, well, he tells you they're his wrestling shorts. <laughs> Looking at them, they're leather short shorts with two leather, like little leather uh, holes, loops for hands to come in. And these things are just gripping his thighs and his butt. Like they, like he was, he was a smaller man when he first put these on and he's kind of sliding into them and he goes, oh, these are not comfortable. All right, mate, here's what we're going to do now. We're going to box or we're going to wrestle. But either way, we're going to, you've spoken through alcohol. Now we're going to speak through combat and not violence. Big difference, mate. You ready? Uh, what, one second. And uh, Dragon's going to walk up and whisper in Tobias's ear. While this fight is happening, you're going to seal all of his clothes and make him go back to camp dressed like that. Tobias just goes, bet. And then he runs <laughs> off with the clothes in a drunken fury. Um, so you're now starting the wrestling. And uh, Morel kind of kind of gets loosened up and he goes, all right, mate. So here's the thing. We go until we stop. Now, I'm going to say this. If you can get both your hands into the loops of me shorts, you automatically win. That's the rules of the wrestling back in Acadia. But if it can't do that, then we're just going to go until we've got nothing left. You got me? Mostly, yes. Uh, holes in pants, put hands in. Yes. Um, yeah. uh, or, or just keep going until we get tired this is sounding a lot like a different thing yeah normally and i must apologize for that because normally we would have mud and we have oil but as i don't have any of those things we're doing this dry you ready oh, mate we, we need we we needed we needed to bring loth here but all right yeah sure let's do it all right good uh so uh <laughs> now let me ask you this in your heart are you wrestling to win are you wrestling to get negative feelings out like negative feelings it? out negative 100%, feelings. 100%. percent. Oh, this is ugly i want you to tell me the tale of what it's like wrestling this guy who's probably a good 60 pounds heavier than you and at least six inches taller than you uh so pretty much uh dragon is you know he's smaller not as big as he used to be but he's still pretty strong um and he doesn't want to hurt morel at all if he even could so he's like trying to lift Morel up and just using the sheer force of things to like get the stress out rather than like punching him in the face to relieve stress. <laughs> so you're lifting him and you're moving him and you're not striking him and he's not striking you. There's, there's even times where like he gets a hand in the back of your head and he's close and ready for like a, a dirty boxing and then he stops, slides his hand up and under your arm and then takes you to the ground and move through it. Uh, you can see a man who has been trained to fight and a man who's been trained for sport and he's kind of in conflict of both, as I'm sure you are too. Yes, exactly. And then and then as you're as you're kind of wrestling, you kind of feel that sense of struggle, of futility, of powerlessness, because you are basically taking on an Acadian human bear. And you can almost feel this feeling that you felt once before facing down the malefactor who wore your dad's face, leaving in Shellator. You're feeling all these feelings as it's personified again in this combat. So what are you doing with that feeling? Uh, with that feeling, I'm, I'm going to roll a D20 just for myself, just to, as a, a, okay. So yeah, uh, he kind of, he has that feeling, the memory of the helplessness of the demon punching into his gut and watching right before he dies, that that feeling of helplessness. And so going from what was like kind of therapeutic wrestling to like tr actually trying to like slam Morel to the ground for a moment. Um, 
so he's gonna try and like slip around uh like grab onto morale's arm put both legs around his torso and then twist to try and take him over take him down okay sensing the shift in energy you can hear morale go good yeah good and he kind of starts to force one leg off one arm around you hip tosses you literally pulls you up to your feet before he shoots a double leg takedown lifts you up and throws you to the ground as hard as he can and you can just hear him scream get back up mike we're not even done yet what's the hardest thing you got for me mike let's go um so he gets up and uh he lets out this like scream this yell like unleashing all of this energy that he's had pent up and then goes to try and take morale down again and tries to lift him off of the ground, like goes, goes in low, tries to lift him up and then slam him into the ground. It's tough. Lifting him is an ego lift, but as you do it, as your legs start to shake and as you can feel everything from your waist down go numb, you just feel this great catharsis overpowering and slamming him down and you can feel that helplessness melt away. You feel your hands tremble as this great adrenaline rush has almost melted away all the pain and all that feeling of when you were fighting the demon wearing your father's face and probably knowing that he was looking over you like some sick child. And then Tobias comes back kind of just innocuously. All right. <sighs> he he kind of like pats the, the stump. It's now talking time. All right, you two break it up, break it up, break it up. You're not married yet. Uh, let's get, uh, let's get just kind of something the stump and let's just talk about feelings. Yeah. Uh, I'll go first. Um, so I never knew my father and it feels very strange to not have an identity based on a role model. You kind of have to pick and choose different men you see in your life and start basing yourself off of them. And that is really risky because I feel like I have modeled myself after some very bad men because I never had a dad. What was it like for you, Dragon? It's hard for me to imagine a life without my father. He taught me everything I know, how to fight, how to love, how to hate, how to win. And it's a hard thing for me to realize and now that you don't always win and that you can't. Morel kind of nods. Yeah, I also knew my father. He's a complicated man. Everyone hates him and he's a prick. But I know that what he does, he does out of love. I can't quite prove it. I can't go back to him to ask him why. But I know deep down inside, as much as he's an asshole, he's a good man. He's just too broken. It's rough, yeah. What matters is, is that, at least the thing I've learned traveling with this lot, is that sometimes you have to pick and choose. You have to, you have to find what works for you and other people and then mirror it on yourself, like you did with your dad. My father was stuck fighting his father's war. My family was disgraced for failing a mission and my father's father tried to reclaim that and he thrust that upon my father who then thrust that upon me. Mm. My dad, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Well, speak from the heart. I'm, all I was going to say is that my father, I know in my heart, would have gladly sacrificed himself for me, and he's going to turn to Tobias. And in my heart, Tobias, I know that when your father sacrificed himself for this world, it wasn't for this world. It was for you. So Tobias... Uh, makes a horrible noise as he begins to get choked up. Uh, this is probably the 
third time anyone's ever seen him cry. And he puts a big arm around you and kind of pulls you in, his forehead kind of knocking into yours. Uh, and with that, the Morel comes in for a big group hug. Dragon, do you accept the big man hug? Uh, absolutely, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so the three of you have a great big hug as you let out some genuine tears and emotions, and you spend the next couple of minutes discussing more about your identity, your childhood, your relationship with other people in the world. And then Tobias just goes, all right, now I have to go back because this man's getting cold and I put all of his clothes back at the campfire. Oh, come on, Morel. Need your chest, mate. We need to get you back. And you just see like Dragon have, having slightly forgotten about telling Tobias to do that, just busts a gut laughing. <laughs> You see Merle, like, look around, like, his, his eyes go wide as his jaw drops. Wait, no, did you really? Uh, Don't worry, what? Morel, it's fine. I'm sure Alona will give you a cuddle and warm you up. I'm I'm in my <laughs> battle shorts. I need to be in my clothes. I can be seen like this. All, all I, look, all I gotta say is that your nipples tell stories, my friend. It's quite cold up, isn't it? My nipples are not bards. You will not listen to their performance. I need you all to go run interference so I can get my clothes so Alona especially does not see me like this. No, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to have Alona bring them to you. I'll be back. No, 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 please, please don't. Please, I'm not ready for that. No, please don't. So, <laughs> that's the alarm. Look. So... Cut to the campfire. I could hear it in the playback. So cut to the campfire. You all have been having this conversation about whatever. You see Tobias come up with like a bunch of clothes and go, hush, drops it by the campfire and comes walking back. It's been maybe about 10, 20 minutes. And now suddenly Dragon comes running back, right? <laughs> Alana, we, we need help. We need, we need help. Um, I'm... What's what the word the word for the thing what happens when you drink? Um drunk. you need water. N no, no, no. It's the you're drunk? More. Ah, yeah, yeah, both here got it. Both here. Yeah. You got it. So Alona, urgently, um morale needs the thing that you do with the magic. Water. Healing. Mm, yeah, that one maybe. But you I, I think also, the, the one bring... you did to make him sober. No, 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 no. Absolutely not. Not that one. We don't not, want not that one. No, no. But what? if you when you do the healing, if you want to take his clothes to him, I mean you might not want to. I don't know. I, you might you might want to, you might want one to. I, I'm not I'm not sure how your feeling is about well, that. Part. Is he naked? Mm, maybe. <laughs> Who knows? I don't I don't know at this point. Um, uh, but if he needs uh, healing, it sounds like like he he really. Yeah, needs I, you really, I mean, yeah, like he, you absolutely have to go. I can't because I can barely walk right now. And I, look how I mean. Yeah, let's get you some water. She's yeah. like, oh, it was right. Yeah, I got to sit. He just plops. Like, he just plops <laughs> like plops down. <laughs> like like oh, oh thank you, John. Thank you. Yeah, this is this is much. Oh, it's so warm by this fire. You know. He's probably very cold. Yeah, out, hypothermia uh, setting in. Yeah, he needs help. Um, he needs help. I, Lothar can also heal. Yeah, I, I can. Lothar, I got a splinter. Yeah, oh, no, uh, Lothar you know they, I got his help ankle. With this, with yeah, these yeah. Two people injured, and yeah. you're the better one. Mm -hmm. Maybe you should go help. Yeah, uh -huh. and, and I'll, I'll I'll help Chionibus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With that. It really hurts. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's such a bad split. It, it is. So Did you crazy. see that? Yeah. Ooh, oh. It's so, ooh, this it was, is the worst it was I've that ever seen. Leader that, of that uh, union. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. came after the, me in the middle of the night. Right. And, you know, you know, it'd be the worst if like Morel froze to death because it's just a lot. Oh, it's great. Oh, right. It's, it's, it's getting weird. late. You might want to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah Bias can hurt. also heal. The bias is probably just as drunk. Yeah, yeah. Look, he can't help. he can't walk either. And he, like Dragon just motions to Tobias. Tobias like, comes look. walking in with like a giant like jug of uh stout and goes, uh, can't do it. Too drunk, not tonight. Much and then too drinks drunk. and then just lays down. <laughs> Hero point, TJ. <laughs> <laughs> it's not aligned. <laughs> that was 
both can't do it, not today. Best movie. Um, okay. Uh, Alona is going to take the clothes and wander into the woods and starts yelling, Morale! <laughs> Morel, if you're naked, you need to let me know right now. <laughs> you hear from behind a bush, I'm not naked. I'm just wearing really short shorts. I'm wearing combat shorts. There's no such thing. No, no there is. How dare you? <laughs> like a Canadian oil wrestling? And then you just, how did you know I used to do that? What? Yeah, I was... In, in, when, in my youth, I was a three-time champion of of the wrestling. Just like in my books. Um. <laughs> I, I just want to imagine in that that he like forgot for a second that he was just wearing the shorts and like walked out like, wait, you know who you know me? <laughs> oh, you want to talk about this hobby I had as a child? Yeah, I'd love to do that. Oh, no, don't mind the shorts. What? <laughs> wait, so is Morel in front of her now? Uh, Morel, you do see Morel like his head poking out from behind mm-hmm. a bush, but he's 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 bigger than said foliage. So like you see his legs kind of like poking out the side and his head kind of poking up. And you can tell from his thighs he's wearing tight leather shorts. Uh, and he's just like, I God damn it. Okay. That's me. That's a Sydney. That's not Alona. <laughs> she does not say that. Um, Alona goes ah! and throws the clothes at him. <laughs> throws them <laughs> just all over him in the bush. He stands Shubbering. up to grab them, and yeah, you can see he's wearing short leather shorts, and he and he's gonna uh duh 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 uh. I don't know what to cover up first. I don't, I don't know. Nothing. Ah, the six eyes save lives. That's what each you told me. So uh, cover those first to save your life. Oh, to save my life. Of course, of course. I, you know what? I'm going to take these off and this is going to be a bit of an ordeal. So why don't you just walk away? I, I think you should probably leave. But you'd be alone in the woods. I mean, yeah, but, you know, I'll be alone with my pants off, so you should probably, you know, just kind of skedaddle. But you don't know what's in these woods. I'll just turn around. That's a good idea. Yeah, why don't you watch my back to make sure that nothing tries to ambush me, and I'll just... Yeah, yes, you wouldn't want to get... Back. <laughs> so you you can hear him like drop his tunic and his armor and he's just like that's a problem with leather pants they just really stick kind of they hug every bloody inch and he's just trying to struggle to get it off he's like my legs have definitely gotten bigger since i was a kid this is really hard to get off my freaking legs and he's just kind of like cursing and swearing in a kid and as he finally gets them off he goes ah Damn, blast you pants. Uh, there you go. Fine. I'm just kind of getting these. And, uh, and, and after a few awkward minutes, he comes back, full tunic, full garb, and he's got his leather shorts folded nicely. And he goes, um, thank you for watching me back. I'm very glad that no one came to attack me. I am also so glad that no one caught you with your pants down, because that sounds like it would be very inopportune for anyone to catch you with your pants down. Mm-hmm. Um we should get back to camp so you can be warm and not yeah. cold. Yeah, very quickly. Yeah, very quickly, in fact. Let's go do that. Yep. I would like to imagine that Dragon and probably whoever wants to join is, like, kind of watching, like... Oh, absolutely. Oh, I'm there. Shit, they're coming back. They're coming back. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Tobias off the ground. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'll mean, just pretend. We, like, fall over and pretend we're asleep. Peaks one eye open. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Act casual. So casual. Oh Oh my god, Reap Psyche. Shiona West peeping from the (laughs) duot. Oh god, this has entered my brain. Just Shiona West in the duot going, hello. 
Can you hear me? <laughs> Anubis somewhere shaking his head like this is not why I gave this to you. <laughs> I have made or, many mistakes. <laughs> or this is exactly why I gave this to you. <laughs> uh, so night follows through with morning rising and with it the morning dew becomes the fresh morning air as you begin about your morning rituals doing your prayers doing your stretches making sure your bow's taut having your food you start to see off in the distance torches lit and oh. you can hear the unusual sounds of yelling Uh, can I go scope it out? Absolutely. Do you want to use stealth to sneak in or perception to see? Uh, let's do perception. Now I'm going to climb a tree to see if I can get a better look. Okay. Go ahead and roll perception for me. I eat. That is such a nice bird up there. Wow. It's so colorful. And I've never seen anything like that before. <laughs> oh my God. That was a natural one, which makes it a 15. Oh my God. Yeah, no, natural one. Um, you see a lot of birds. This so continent good. got some pretty ass birds though. Can I try? Yeah, go ahead. Perception or survival. Or, I'm sorry, perce perception or stealth. My bad. I rolled a 17 on stealth. Okay. Mm. Ooh. That's a 18. Okay. So, Dragon, as you begin to sneak towards them, uh, and Lothier, as you begin to try and observe them from a distance, um, you come into view of two massive torches placed on pikes centered in the ground. And you see another group of these exact same torches get planted. In the middle, you see a very large orc wearing uh, a very art, uh, uh, expensive robe uh, instead of like the darkish kind of uh, uh, camouflage green, you see more of like a kind of a burnt orange kind of color texture. Um, and this orc is kind of looking at this massive book and then pointing off to something and, and he's shouting in orcish. Do, uh, do you two speak orcish at all? Uh oh. Okay. Uh, Shumas, give me a perception check to hear the orcish. It's better. That is so much better. 33. 33. That's so much better. Uh, you hear this uh, orc in orcish say, No, 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 no. We need to remove that entire row. It's going to get in the splash zone. I, I said thrust stage. What is this? What, what, what is it? I want a thrust stage. Where is the lighting guy? We have been working on getting organic lighting for this. And quite frankly, these torches are not, they're not good for anyone. <sighs> Look, Oscar and James is giving me a lot of uh, credit and I cannot screw this up on my first time out. Can I sneak up behind him and like lean up against a tree? I'm just like, yeah, I think it needs to actually be a little more to the left. Uh, to really get that natural lighting in from that tree. But, you know, you might need to cut that one down just a little or trim it at least so you can really get that most opportune lighting. Yeah, give me a stealth check. Yeet. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, 21. 21. So as you sneak in and you just start having that moment, like, yeah, you see the organ actually going, Jesus. Oh, my Gorm's left eye. <sighs> um, welcome to the production. Uh, this is in common to you. Um, do you, do you happen to be a stage tech or a theater hand at all? Um, you know, I'm not, but I know like people who are, uh, but what's, what's this production that you got going on? Cause oh. I like, think I've heard of it, but I'm not quite sure. Uh, so they introduced themselves to you as the uh, brand new playwright, uh, Meinemong, Meinemong Tongabi. Meinemong Tongabi. And they are uh, a orc performer of the Golden Fire Tribe that has been working with Oscar and James in their traveling show. 
He says, I used to be in the show called uh, The Heroes of Tomorrow. Um, and it was this great performance. You travel all over and do great shows. And Oscar and James really liked some of my performances and wanted to give me an opportunity to be a playwright. So I'm writing my own play. I'm basing it off of like my favorite uh, story as a kid. Um, you know, a lot of pressure on me. But uh, as in, you know, as a playwright, and I just, I just kind of want it to be perfect, you know? Yeah, yeah, I get that, you know? Uh, well, let me call my friends over and let's see if, like, you know, we can help you in our little travels. We're having a little bit of a break currently. So, like, why don't I just see if, like, we, you need some extra hands or something? Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, please bring your friends and, and I'll, I'll, I'll whip this into shape if I have to get out my old battle axe. Sean West is going to walk back. Just false alarm, guys. It's just a bunch of nerds. Oh. <laughs> Hero point. <laughs> it stings because it's true. <laughs> Damn. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it is. Uh, look, at um, it, look at this show. They do this every year. <gasps> every time. Does Chio explain the bit about yes. that? He, okay, mm-hmm. that this that this person was cool, cool, cool. Um, I want to know who they played. Really bad. I mean, we can go ask them. We should go ask them who they played. Wait, do you guys know these people or no? Um, not personally, at least. No, we know the people that they worked for because the play that they were in was written about us. Right. He, oh, right. That's the name of our group. Oh, right. Oh, I don't know. I got to think. <laughs> you know, what's what's interesting is that uh, we didn't pick this name. Yep. Um, this was this was the name that just started happening. Yep. Um, we did not. Well, names are kind of overrated. I'm not going to lie, but you know, they, they, they pop up every once in a while and you just kind of roll with it, I guess. Wait, I just realized something. What? If they made a play about you guys because you saved the world, Mm -hmm. if we do that, are they going to put us in a play? I mean, probably. That's awesome. Oh my God. So like, if you get in a play, do you still want a bird? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I mean, those dragon, two are things aren't dragon. connected. I mean. Yeah, that's, that's very different. But, whoa, I I might be, whoa, I wonder what my mama would say. I would be in like one of those traveling shows. Whoa, I got to, and he starts heading over to talk to the playwright. <laughs> yeah, I, I, look here, who would you want to get to play you in the play? Oh, uh, I don't know any fancy you know, troop actors, but I would. Yeah, there's there's one guy, Mad Fit, that I would like to play me. Oh, that's great. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, I just I just hope they're really cool. You know, like they they can. Uh, oh, but how would they turn into animals? That would be hard on stage, wouldn't it? No, they just have somebody throw a costume over them. Oh, like they run off stage real quick and then they come back out as a bear. Of course, I, you know, we don't get many traveling troops where I'm from. So this is the coolest moment of my entire life. Well, we got to save the world first. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah. But I mean, like, at least now they will start learning that we're part of the group. That's true. That's very true. We're like, right. we're getting in there. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> ah, cool. Yeah. Hello, <clears throat> Mr. Playwright. Hello. Uh, yeah, hello. Hello there. Hello. Listen, I I know that your friend uh, brought you here to help me, but here's the thing: I have stagehands, I have uh, I have tech, I have crew, I have everything. Fortunately, a lot of the actors went missing. I would really love it if you lot could be my main cast. I, it I, would it would mean the world to me. This is my this is my chance to tell not really my story, but a story from me. And I really think that you all have what it takes to knock it out of the park. Could you do that for me? An orc with their first chance of becoming one of the first 
globally recognized orcish playwrights. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're, we're all in. We're, we're all, all in. in. Oh, oh, hold on. All of us. We hold got on. a friend who's really strong and mm-hmm. another friend who, who, who uh, can make magic alcohol. Uh, he could turn into a bear and other animals. That's that's amazing. Okay, okay, great. Um, listen, I'll tell you what. We're gonna have our first audience in a few hours. Unfortunately, I don't have any time to give you the scripts and have you learn your lines. So we're just cool. going to have to let you let the spirits of the story move through you. Okay, you're gonna do great. Costumes are in the back. We'll get you set up. You'll be ready. We we go live in a few hours. Okay. What's the story? Cool. Don't worry about that. Everyone else here knows the story. We'll just figure it out as we go along. Speak from your heart. Speak your truth, and it will ring volumes. Ilona turns to Shionibus. I've had nightmares about this. I can't go on stage without learning my lines. Uh, I don't know what this means. It's okay. It's okay. All you have to do is read your, like, just memorize books. You memorize the books galore memorized. Just talk about one of those. I don't know. Or, or, you know what? religion like prayers and things those are very ritualistic and those are, can kind of be like uh, a show people watch them and enjoy them correct uh, quick question um what's a script oh nothing you have to worry about today oh okay yeah i was, I was just curious like is it something that is normally with the, i don't i don't know what that is now if you're ready for the level five hype train surprise. <gasps> oh my God. You I'm have sure. to now improvise a play in three acts. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Here is how this is going to work. I need to have two of you, and I mean literally any two of you, cast as the, cr- the star-crossed lovers that fall in love and it is doomed. Let me give you the beats of the play you're about to perform. Two star-crossed lovers overcoming a terrible tragedy at the hand of a betrayer. With the help of a magical ally, love conquers all, and the day is saved. Now, here's the thing. Two of you in Act 1 will be cast as the star-crossed lovers. You don't know the script. You don't know the play. But everyone who's not the two cast actors will be castmates. And they may or may not know it. They may or may not know the play at all. If you don't know what's supposed to happen next, you're going to have to reach out to your castmates and get a get for the rest of the scene. Eventually, every act, another one of you is going to have to get cast until all that leaves is the four of you and me. And at the end of this performance, I'm going to tell you some points. You're going to make performance checks, and we're going to see how much the audience loves your completely improvised, off-the-cuff, chaotic, and unprepared play. So the question is, who will be cast as the Starcraft lovers? Star? Starcraft lovers, good lord. Starcrossed lovers in the first act. I mean, it's obvious. Uh, Morell and Tobias. Morell and <laughs> Noah's got to be a PC. <laughs> as funny as that would be, yeah. I'm sure as everyone would love to see me just role play with myself. It's got to be two players. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess I'll step up to the plate. Yeah. Okay. okay. And be one of them. Yeah. Because I mean, it's my moment to be a star. I mean, look, yeah. look, I mean, I, I could do it if you guys, if you want me to. And, Be free, Dragon. Live but, your best nerd life. But I mean, Alona, you're clearly very excited about this. So if you, no, no, if no. You want it, that is true. This is fine. Mm-hmm. This yeah, works for me. Chanavis, don't you think that Alona is just so excited about this? She's so excited. So right? excited. She's so excited to be on stage mm-hmm. and to do this. Yeah. Wow. yeah. You know that, that, that one dream, you can't really mess up a script with lines if there were never lines for you to mess up in the first place. What a great way to call yeah, it. Yeah, you, you, you know? Mm-hmm. You really challenge yourself. Like, yeah. I, look, I, 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 you know, I, I, I'm happy being the supporting cast for this one. After what happened in the town, that was a lot of, like, you know, chaotic backstory stuff. Like, I don't know if I have the emotional <laughs> energy to, yeah. like, you know, do this right now. I, and she was just going to put her hand on Dragon's shoulder. Yeah, you've been through a lot, buddy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ugh. <laughs> So 
who is going to be starring opposite of Lothier for the Sarah Cross Lover? Alona. Alona. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now, the other so two sorry, of you. Sorry, Sydney. I love you. The other two of you, Wes and Kylie, you are going to be playing the castmates. When they don't know what to say and they reach out to you, whatever you give them, whatever random thought pops into your head, they have to play off of. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Now, as each act continues, we'll have to cast somebody new as the next person of the play. Now, that being said, it is showtime. Granted, they have a ton of costumes and a lot of castmates, and you have no script, but it's time for you to take the stage as the sun and moon trade places and the audience is filled. You're seeing rich socialites, celebrities, theater aficionados, and critics from all over the world here for this pop-up performance in the middle of this forest, in the middle of nowhere. How avant-garde, how brave and bohemian. So now, the lights flight, just poof, light up with magic. You see, you see two orcs and goblins moving this gigantic like mirror refractor with a light and with a with a candle in front of it, and this huge spotlight hits the stage. And one of your castmates comes out and goes, "Fair gentle people, on the stage is where we set the scene. What can be done? Uh, what could it mean when two people meet?" and fall in love. Can they fight for life on this earth or must they raise the stars above? Thank you for your money. No, no, seriously, thank you for your money. We really need it. But also thank you for your time. We hope you enjoy this show. It was much better than this rhyme. And then they leave the stage and suddenly Lothier and Alona, you get this kind of, you're on, you're on, go, from the backstage person as they shove you on to set and go, okay, go. And they give this like, with this expectant look like, do the thing. Right. Um, oh, how beautiful you are to stand right before me. I, I don't think I knew what love was before this moment. Castmate. <laughs> filing from left and right you see a bunch of other actors kind of take the stage like striking tableaus and poses it's like oh, look at these two in love and somewhere in the mix is Shionibus and uh, Dragon Shionibus looks at Dragon which is like eyes widened like a deer in headlights like whispers in Alona's ear you should say something about being wildly in love too. That's how these things work, right? Right. Oh my God. You're so beautiful. I love how tall and muscular and handsome you are. It's so great that you're also really kind and nice and you have thick booty shorts. <laughs> no. I look straight at Morel and... <laughs> Morel's backstage going, don't look at me, look at her. <laughs> oh, ah, uh, oh, but how your eyes shine like the moon in the sky and uh, your hair. Uh, I look at Morel. Lie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Morel goes, and um, tell her she has really cool books. And books <laughs> you and Lothier's thinking and he goes your books could fill the world with such knowledge because you are so kind and generous to all those you meet that's the kind of thing you want to say to a lady <laughs> oh he starts taking a notebook and he's yeah. like something to say to a little man and it like whispers uh, it like like goes up and like whispers in Lothier's ear no, it's your eyes speak volumes to my heart. That's what oh, it should have been. Yeah. You're right. Your eyes, they speak volumes to my heart. Oh, that was really good. Oh, it was, oh. It, it was him. Oh, uh, Alona looks at Shonibus. Right. 
Oh, wow. That was so good of you to say to me. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. Thank you, Booty Short Hot Man. <laughs> but alas, our love could never be. You're right. Your booty shorts are too short and my books are too heavy for the knowledge. It would never work. Uh, but oh my God. mayhaps we will meet again the next night the stars shine. Yes, the next night that the stars shine, which will be tomorrow night because that's when the stars come out again. You're then right. maybe we shall meet and I will bring books about booty shorts to expand my knowledge and learn more about your world. Oh, all right. And I will spend more time saving the world with a giant shield and all of the oil that I can find. Um, but I will send a messenger to you. All right, <laughs> how about that? And then that's how we'll know where to meet. I look at our friends. <laughs> All right. We, as you look at the friends, everyone else on stage made this tableau staring at the both of you. And then and then they just kind of like do this, like this kind of ballet jazz step off the off the stage. And one of them breaks to center stage and goes, okay, good, go, go, no, leave, leave now, leave stage. <clears throat> uh out of character, that was act one. The meeting of the star-crossed lovers who are doomed because someone's booty shorts is too short and someone's books are too heavy. And that's why their love could never be. Now we're moving into act two. <laughs> I gotta make a note here. Booty shorts and heavy books. Uh, off stage, no. Dragon is going to whisper. It's like, wow, they gave up like really quickly. Right? It was like so fast. <laughs> Over like the silliest. Yeah. Like, like we can do better, right? Um, yeah. Oh, oh, can you? Well, speaking of the devil, it's now your time to prove it because we have to cast the betrayer, the evil one who hatches their evil plan. Who wants to be the betrayer, Dragon or Shionibus? Rock, paper, scissors for it. Let's do it. All right. Rock, paper, scissors. Scissors, shoot. Oh. Rock, paper, scissors, <laughs> shoot. 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 Ah. Hey, yo. All right. All right. Uh, Shionibus right, is the betrayer. Okay. So, second, cool. So the, the person comes out and he goes, with our two star-crossed lovers uh, exchanging haughty looks, they cannot be for short, too short and heavy books. Though love is a force as pure as, pure as nature, and they will get together. And he kind of points off stage. Um, and our hearts should be light as wafers. I'm struggling because of you. What are you doing? Anyway, uh, but, uh, but though communication is a must, as love begets such beautiful words, they must come together in the night and exchange uh, uh, sorted tweets like birds but there is an enemy in the midst with greater plans indeed, and we shall see this villain and give them much heed. And they kind of start to leave the stage as then suddenly Shionibus, you're thrown out to stage in the middle all by yourself. You see the audience just staring at you as the light poof, kind of blinds your left eye a bit. And then you hear this voice, Psst, oh, you're the betrayer, set the stage. Um... These lovers have ruined my day. Their happiness sends my blood into a boil. And I want nothing more than to see them crumble. Looks at Dragon. With that, the curtain opens behind you and all the castmates start to fill in uh, the back again. And you, you, so now it's just you and the castmates and they're saying, I heard the lovers are gonna send words to each other at night. I heard they're going to hold hands by the sunlight. And, and they're having all these moments. 
What have you? What have you heard about the star-crossed lovers? I've heard that they're going to have a wonderful candlelit dinner at sundown. Ooh, sundown, you say? Hmm. How brilliant. Well, I just happen to be on my usual nightly walks around then, scheming and planning, and maybe, just maybe, that is the perfect time to hatch this devious plan. For who wants to see such star-crossed lovers win when evil is clearly the better option? Insert evil laugh. And then the casmate just kind of go, So, so you're going to uh, attack them, yes? How will you do that? Do you have a guess? With my evil henchman named... It is I, Brad, the evil henchman. <laughs> <laughs> is that Dragon coming out or is that a castmate? Dragon, so now you have a you now you have an evil henchman named Brad. And please continue. Please introduce us to Brad, your evil henchman. Ah, Brad, you've been gone for so long, I began to worry. Now, I need your assistance. Of course, my liege. What can I do for you? This pulls out a vial is to be placed in each of their drinks. It is supposed to put them into a sort of slumber, if you will. So it's poison, it shall kill them. Yes, yes, it is poison. Oh, okay, I just wanted to make sure because like, I didn't want to taste test it or anything and that would be bad. No, please don't, I still need you around to do my taxes. All right, that's good. Are you filing an extension for that, by the way, because that was supposed to be done like a week ago. I'll get on it afterwards. Yeah, it, Thank fine. you. Yes, yes. But yes, one drop each of their drinks. Poison. Do not drink it. Okay. All right. I will not drink it. The poison for the crossed off the star crossed lovers. Yes. The poison for the star crossed lovers. Yes. The star crossed lovers poison. If you will. Got it. Mm-hmm. All right. Wonderful. Well, on with you. I shall be gone with the poison. For the Starcast lovers to put in their drink. Runs off stage. And as you run off stage, all the all the castmates go, gasp! What was supposed to be but simple love and picnic free is now being murdered D with poison ing. And they rush off stage. Uh hold on, I gotta do one more thing here. Dragon. Is Brad okay? <laughs> so like, Rocky Janet, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I'm just a sweet transvestite. Now, Whoa. that being said, <laughs> great song. I don't care what it's anyone says. Song, yeah. yeah, it's there a great song. Go. Uh, so now this, this does put a little bit of a rut here. Act three, we have to cast the magical ally of. The star-crossed lovers. Who will be also, that? That could also be Brad. <gasps> Do you want that to be? Okay. <gasps> the twist. So, <laughs> <Thick is. laughs> exactly. Now, in this scene, all four of you will be on stage at the same time as you enact this final scene for the play. The castmates will be there as well. So if you don't have an idea and you want to search for a line, they'll give you your get. I will be all of the castmates. It is on to you to be the characters you've been cast in to wrap up this play in act three. Eventually, you are all four of you shoved back on a stage with the same grace and fed upness as, I mean, anyone who's backstage just done with actors. So poof, you get pushed out there. Set the scene. Oh, you made it. I did. I did all of the research on booty shorts that I could find. And, and I now read I'm, all the books. I'm I so proud of you. And I feel like I know so much more about you with only having been able to talk to you for five minutes. This is what love is. This is I exactly understand. what, there's no way we could be wrong. 
after just seeing each other for a few moments and then leaving and spending the rest of the day by ourselves. You're right. Absolutely. I have read all of these books. Whoa. Look. That's a, a lot of a lot of books. Yes, it is. Now, are we going to have dinner? Oh, oh of course. I have had my uh, best friend and uh, to, to set the table for us here beneath the beautiful moon and stars. Wow, that's so nice of your friend. What is your friend's name? His name is Brad. Yes, we I went am. to school together. We did go to school together, and I have been here to prepare your lovely a meal for this lovely evening. Here are some drinks. Oh, it's kind of green. That's a bit odd, but hey, to ev everlasting love. Am I right? I do, I do not mean to reject your offer. However, I am abstinent from alcohol and therefore do not partake. It, it, though I appreciate your candor. It is not alcohol, miss. It is but tea. Whispers. That changes everything. <laughs> whispers, whispers to Giannibus, poison tea. <laughs> But then to the audience, or is it? <laughs> the audience has this whole like, ooh. Oh, shall we drink to our love? Yes, we shall. Also, I appreciate the costume change that you did, the, the outfit you wore tonight. Um, it is very dashing. Your yes. uh, outfit that is of, Cheers. Oh, uh, thanks. Uh, I came from far away on my camel, which also has the same name as I. But I, I like to travel. <laughs> what, is, what is your name? Oh, it is Morel. What? No, it's, my name's Morel. <laughs> Are just oh, storm out, I, and a bunch I, of people I, grab him and pull him back off stage. Hey, God just pushes him back. <laughs> oh, it's Durrell. <clears throat> Sorry, that was just my weird cold. <clears throat> uh -huh. Oh no, I'm sorry about your cold. Maybe we should have some warm tea to help you with your cold. Agreed. Let's drink. To, to love and happiness. Forever. Forever. Uh, and then the cast mate runs out. The, the, the both did uh, clink the, the wonderful glass. Uh, the leather chaps really gripping his ass. They, <laughs> they uh, into each other's eyes, the view begin to sink. But what evil could come after they had their drink? Will the poison have its day? Or will love have something to say? And the castmate turns and goes, you need to save this right now. He's turning to all of you. Save this. Don't kill the lovers. And the castmate just kind of exit stage left. <laughs> and he goes to whisper to Lothier and, and, uh, and Alona, just fall over for now. I've got a plan. Oh. <sighs> It's, it's a sleeping potion, sleeping <laughs> potion. You don't die, you don't die. Oh, oh. sleep. <laughs> sleeping, sleeping. <laughs> there you are, my liege. I have poisoned the lovers. Looks to the audience again. Ah, Brad. Yes. I can always count on you so much more than and Jeremy. And I have saved you this lovely slice of cake. How kind. She'll take it. Is this, is this boysenberry? It, it might be. Do you like boysenberry? <laughs> you should know I love boysenberry. Oh, yes, of course. She will eat it. At least, like, she'll, like, tear off a piece and then just eat it. And then there's, like, a, a, a smile. Ha-ha! This is what you get. You have gotten your just desserts, for you have eaten the poison that you have you gave me to kill the lovers. 
gasp. They are merely asleep. <laughs> I have foiled your evil plot. How dare you? We were going to rule the world, Brad. And you do this to me? Now I shall rule alone. Blasphemy. And the star-crossed lovers shall now wake, for nothing can stand in the way of true love. Oh. Oh. That tea was really good. It was. Why is there a dead person next to our table? I don't, I've never seen this person in my entire life. Go to Brad. Room, get cast and be like, drag me away, drag me away, drag me away. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the cast just goes, oh no, grabs you and just goes, get her off stage. And they just start pulling you off. Fear not, uh, star-crossed lovers, but a, a, that was but a foul traitor to try to take you, your love away. <gasps> she yes. wished me to poison you. But instead, I poisoned her. Now you can be with your lovers forever, for your true eternity. And I am not Brad. And like, just like, kind of wisps his hair back. For I am a mystical mage of love. (laughs) Sworn to protect it whenever possible. That was beautiful. And, and with, with an awkward silence, all the castmates came out and were like, yes, and with this, the mystical mage of love, let love conquer all. And, and to you, we, we say, thank you for your money. The end to the show. And <laughs> now I need everyone to make a performance check. I'll be right back. Oh. I want to throw this out there that, that uh, Dragon is not trained in performance. <laughs> Oh, but but we're gonna get the best performance. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Arguably, out of all of them. Oh no! (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Is it that one, please? Is it that one? Keep it. Keep it. I want to see what's gonna happen. Are you kidding me? That's amazing. (laughs) Oh no! Oh my god! I rolled, I only have a plus three. I rolled an 11, so it's a 14. (laughs) Uh, That's one of my highest rolls tonight, too. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no. Man, Karma's a bitch. That was was great. Oh, um, well, that's fantastic. I'm so glad. I also love... We mm-hmm. don't really know what uh, Stark Cross lovers mean because no, we, <laughs> we yeah, ended no, happily no. ever after. <laughs> there was there was two ways this could have gone, um, and we chose the wrong one. And that's fine. <laughs> I gave Brad one job. <laughs> that's all, all I'm saying. All I gotta say is, you guys could have taken it and been like, actually, we don't really like each other that much. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I, I was about to, but. It's cool. I was also Go ahead. Like, show business, baby. <laughs> the other idea I had was to at the end wake up and instead of uh, loving uh, Alona's character, to love yours. <laughs> oh, that would have been yes. the best. That would have been so good. Oh, what I, what I miss? Nothing, PJ. Alternate, al- al- alternate. Yeah, endings. we had. We're, we're, we're just helping the orc play right out. Yeah, of course, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make me show better. Uh, so they. You see, as the as the stage uh, lights dim, this curtain drops down, and on it is written, "Booty Shorts and Heavy Books presents Just Desserts." The name of this play. I need to know everyone's performance check because there is a giant group DC to beat to see if the audience loves this. However, oh. along the way, I was making notes for whenever you did something. I put little points in there. You don't know how many bonus points you got. It may be the difference maker. Oh, I don't think it's going to matter, PJ. Oh, PJ. None of us have uh, uh, performance, I don't think. But uh, I got my my role. Yeah. Was a 17. 17. It's a great number. Mm. 14. 14. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good for Dragon. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. 
Kylie, what did you get? Uh, I got a 29. That's Damn. right to see. Right to see. <laughs> you were you were really good too. <laughs> I mean, everyone loves a good villain. All right, now Sydney, what is your number? <laughs> <laughs> One critical fail. Oh no. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. All right, I gotta do some math really fast here. Do you though? Yeah, I mean I do because I don't know what total all these are. I'm I'm almost positive they're not gonna hit the mega DC, but let's see what they are. The mega DC. Mega DC. The mega DC. Sunday. Coming Sunday, soon. Sunday. Sunday, yeah. Sunday. Sunday. Coming soon to Mega DC. It's Batman. 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 <laughs> Okay, so I was I was maybe a bit ambitious with this DC because in the past when you have group DCs, you've all have just crushed it. So I thought I'd probably try to challenge you all and I'd make group TC. <laughs> uh, let me get my notes here. I want to make sure I get this correct. Uh, 140. <laughs> in the past, to be fair, in the past, when you all have had like 100, 110, 120, You've killed it by like 10 points. What are our skills? I, out, of, you, out of curiosity. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, out of curiosity though, even if we all hit 30, that's yeah. still a wholly 120 points. But there was room for bonus points made from that's your performances true. and choices. Okay. You could right, have in theory right. done it. Now, also critical 20s, which would give you a bonus 10. That's something that I do. Now, 140 was the number to beat. With the huge amount of bonuses you got for your amazing performance, you got an 81 total. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and suddenly someone stands up and goes, wait, isn't it a bit convenient that Brad is also the love mage? How would the <laughs> villain, why would she hire the love mage to kill two lovebirds? There's blood holes in this script and I want to talk to the playwright. Can I roll intimidation and just glare? Yes. I would also like to help with intimidation. Go right ahead. <laughs> oh, hero point. Ooh. Okay. Uh, 30. Okay, what was yours, uh, Wes? Uh, mine was 24. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so what are you doing to intimidate them? So I'm going to like... Stick my head out of the curtain, Blair, and like sit down. I stomp out. I. She didn't know I was the love mage. That's the whole point. Yeah, yeah. it was trickery. You've clearly been deceived in your life. I know it. You've got that look of the person who's been deceived a lot. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the guy just goes, "Huh? Oh." I, I guess it's a more complex story than what I saw. There's layers. It's like so an onion. Many. There's layers. Many and he just layers. slowly sits back down. And then someone else goes, I think what it is, is, is an open forum for the conversation of love. But what are you trying to say about love even? He shouts back to you. That it's convenient that, that you're, just, you're just complacent in it. I'm going to roll also an intimidation check. Oh, yes. Okay, go ahead. Yes. Yeah. No. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what was the total? Uh, well, actually, hmm. Not that bad. Everybody, decent bonus or intimidation for some reason. Uh, no, it's pretty bad. It's not that bad. On me. It's an 18. Ooh. 18. Okay, okay. okay. Right. And what do you say? I poke my head out and I say, we're trying to say, um, <laughs> oh, oh, I know your I, opinion I doesn't matter. No. I want to, I want to pop my head out. Sometimes yeah. love isn't that easy. And even if two people have a really hard time communicating how they feel, it's all about what's in their hearts. And that love can conquer all things even if those two people are from places that normally wouldn't allow them to be in love. Looks at Morel. Love 
Yeah. And love lo stares directly at Alona. <laughs> love is way more powerful and can shape the world in more ways than one. And it can make the strongest man become such a blubbering fool sometimes. But it's the greatest moments in our lives. And that's what this play is about. Love. <laughs> Give me a diplomacy check with a plus four. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Brilliant. That is a 29. Nice. Okay, okay. That's good. So as you as you get this heartfelt speech, you see everyone that's been standing up, like fighting the whole thing, just kind of slowly sit back down. And they're just staring there watching you speak. And then when you're done, they just go, yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. It puts it all, all into perspective, a completely different perspective. Yeah, yeah, I was just thinking that. You know, it's my job. It's my problem. I'm too cynical. Oh, yeah, you're, you're a bit cynical. Yeah, it's because I'm jaded. I just thought I was better because I had a better view of what art could be, you know, and I just became snobby. And they had this kind of introspection. And then the writer comes on stage. You see the orchid, he goes, hey, yeah, it's a metaphor. Uh, th thank you all for, for coming to see. He looks up at the title. <sighs> Booty shorts and heavy books, just desserts. Um... As, as the play grows, we are going to be going to a new location. So we're going to tear this site down and be somewhere else. Keep an eye out. Uh, hopefully in a week's time, we can send out some birds and let you know where we're going to be meeting. Thank you so much. Good night, everyone. Now, with your amazing roles defending your piece, you had a total of 182. Since you didn't initially succeed, I'm not going to count it as a critical fail. This critical oh. fail means that you would be getting a ton of free rations because they would literally throw food at you for being so bad. Oh. So you get free rations because they want you gone. Oh. You don't get the critical success, which is a pot of 2,000 gold pieces. No. Instead, I'm going to flip a coin to decide if you get the, the fail or the success option. Heads, failure, tail, success. Tails, uh, uh, basic success. They take all of the money from everyone. They say, we constantly do shows all over. I am doing this whole new thing of pop-up avant-garde theater. We may run into you again. I don't know. But here's 1,000 gold pieces. You can share it amongst your lot. We made dynamite gold. Now, please leave. We need to strike this set. P please go. Can I roll diplomacy real fast? Mm, for what? Well, you know, you have two uh, Heroes of Tomorrow in your cast currently. You know, I don't think you knew that, but, you know, basically superstars and whatnot. Give me a diplomacy check. <laughs> uh, that's a 32. <laughs> okay, okay. I will bump that up. So he looks, he goes... You're the, you're the people I've been portraying on stage for so long with Oscar and James. We're their friends. I just, oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah, I, 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 this, this is Alona. Ichi's over there. Hello, hello. Oh my goodness! I, I was mush. I was mush. I stole the stage. We had to write an entire song because they wanted more mush. I love you all. Your story is so, so in, in, entrancing and, and being able to express such emotion, some deep, deep emotions from, from the spectrum that you all must have carried. This is amazing. Yeah. So like, is there like some more money we can get or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the best I can do is to give you 2000 gold pieces. Um, but if you ever run into uh, the, the man, Mush, uh, six foot tall, big beard, long, fluffy tail. If you ever see him, let him know that I'm truly honored to step in his shoes. Yeah, definitely. I'll let him know, you know. I think I go grab coffee with him next week, so I'll yes. definitely let him know. 
he he is he has been a big inspiration for me. A- a- anyway, we have to go. You really should go. Thank you so much for your experiences. Yeah, yeah. Safe travels. He immediately so, takes the money and walks away. For those so, who don't know, Mush is a badger. Yeah, I was definitely gonna ask, but a small you. badger. He said six uh, foot with a beard and. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. That, that was that was fun, right? Would that you was have fun. It, it was an experience unlike any other. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. But yeah. people do this for a living. That's got to be hard. You know, it doesn't pay the bills. That's it definitely sure. does. It doesn't seem like it would. Yeah, no. Yeah, like that dude just stood up and and like said stuff about how the dude's writing wasn't so good. Yeah, what an asshole. She right? gonna like this sit. Pour out the money and just be like, one, two, three, four. For just the moment. Mm -hmm. Well, normally we would be ending here. We're going a little bit later uh, than normal. Um, You know, technical difficulties and all that. But uh, I want to say that that amazing scene by these amazing performers was done because of the level five hype train. I also want to say that everyone here is going to be starting off next week with two hero points instead of one because you all were so goddamn good. I want to make sure that that carries. I want to reward you. So you all get two hero points next session. So that was because your level five hype train as is also this extra credit scene at the end of today's episode. A lot of you begin traveling south and south and south. It's been a few days. You almost begin to lose track of time. You think maybe you see a giant stone wall. You're not sure if it's stone or iron, but it's massive. And eventually you lose track of time as rains for smud to cake on your shoes, as birds sing choruses. And then eventually one day the rain stops, the mud becomes extra thick. The sky becomes blotted out in a gray haze. And there's a deadly quiet that rushes over all of nature. Every animal stops dead in its tracks, terrified hearts pounding with the speed of machine gun fire. (laughs) And as they do, you hear a horrible scream, a dragon scream, eclipsing what is left of the sun as it is hidden under a blanket of gray skies and clouds. A massive dragon begins to loom over you. Its eyes become alight as fire begins to grow from its mouth. And as it is about to bake you all, you hear another sound, an unusual sound, the crack and pop of thunder, thunder rolling. The echo hangs in the air. And when you open your eyes from the loud explosion, you see the dragon looking at you with a giant gaping hole in its chest as it falls down dead in front of you. Standing behind it, you see a six foot one woman wearing olive drab military garb, hair up in a bun, sleeves rolled up nice and tight. She has a weapon perched at her chest, racks it as something jettisons from this unusual device. And she just walks forward, looking at the dead dragon with a smile on her face rests the shotgun on her shoulders and smiles and says, hey there, strangers. Well, I'm guessing you're in the wrong place, huh? Hey, maybe I should introduce myself. I, you know what? I go by so many names. But around here, they call me Camouflage. And that is where we are going to end episode 25 of Edge of Legend. If you want to know who Camouflage is, if you want to know what the heck just happened at the very end of this, thank you for the hype train so much. Tune in episode 26. Y'all are going to find out a lot of shit. All Dre so, got us thinking right now is, I need to get me one of those. I'm thinking, why'd you kill a dragon? Would the dragon, I mean, yeah, it would have killed us, but the dragon was just living its life and, 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 and doing things. 
<laughs> it should be said that the dragon does seem to kind of break apart in particles like embers from a fire rising to the sky. Mr. Stark, I don't feel so good. <laughs> oh, no! I'm so sorry. Oh. Well, that being said, everyone, thank you so much for coming in. We're going to be wrapping up and calling it a night. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Let us say our goodbyes and good night, starting with Kylie. Kylie, tell us who you are and where we can find you on that sweet, sweet internet. So, uh, you can find me at Kylie's Wonderful Life all over the internet. Um, Instagram, t- Twitter, Twitter, and TikTok. Uh, all that good stuff. Uh, when I am not there, I am over on uh, World Tree Quests here on Twitch Sundays at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and then the rest of the time zones that are equivalent to that. Um, yeah, I am going to be doing quite a bit of stuff here in the next few weeks, so please keep an eye out on social media for that. Also, if you have not looked at my Twitter today, I am doing a poll because I'm a nerd, right? And and I want to know what what uh, my who my godly parent is. So please comment on my Twitter or Instagram. Doesn't matter. Probably Twitter is better. Uh, and tell me who would be my godly parent because I'm now invested. I've gotten a lot of Athenas. I've gotten a lot of Artemises. I've gotten a Bassette, which I think is really cool because like homegirl. Um, but yeah, let me know. I'm interested. Okay, bye. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, next up, as we're saying our good nights and our goodbyes, let's hear from Wes. Wes, please tell us who you are and where we can find you on that sweet, sweet internet. Hello, everyone. I am Wes, and uh, thank you very much. This was a fun, ep- a great episode, PJ. This is a lot of fun. Um, and uh, on the sweet, sweet internet, you can find me at Wes underscore IRL on all the things. I run a show called Yeet for Initiative, uh, which is Dungeons & Dragons 5e, uh, almost every Friday. Uh, we won't be there this week, uh, but we will be back next week. Um, so stay tuned for that. And PJ is one of our lovely cast members. Yeah. And next up, Sydney. Sydney, please tell us who you are and where we can find you on that sweet, sweet internet. Hello. You can find me all over the internet at Sydney Rubino. That's Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. Um, yeah, I'm around. Um, <laughs> So I have a few things coming up. Um, when they solidify, I will absolutely let you know. Um, but keep look at the end of the month for something with hazards, hazards and hijinks. Who's been in the chat? It's been super funny. Um, and also maybe a fun thing with Randy and Wes later in the year. Ha ha tease. Woo You'll find out later. Um, but yeah, that's what I got going on right now. Thank you so much for being here. You guys are amazing. And this was such a fun episode and exactly what I needed tonight, so thank you. Well, last and certainly never least, Randy, please tell us who you are and where we can find you on that sweet, sweet internet. Yo, yo, what's up? Uh, Sweet, sweet is a lot, so I'm just gonna, one sweet. But uh, (laughs) my name is Randy Alvarenga, and uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Rolleraja, that's R-O-L-L-E-R-R-A-J-A, to find out all the cool stuff I'm doing. Uh, right now, I'm playing uh, Shadowrun and getting ready for an Aliens TTRPG uh, on, yeah, that's going to be fun. I'm, I'm I, you know, Aliens, scary, cool. Um, and some other cool stuff coming down the pike. So come check it out and find out what's happening. But I look forward to it. And thank you all for watching and the hype train. You guys are awesome. Yeah. I guess that just leaves a little me. My name is PJ McGaw. You can find me all over the internet at PJ.McGaw, Facebook, uh, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. Come find me, come find me, and let's have fun. When I'm not uh, here with these amazing legends, I'm doing a bunch of other stuff. Uh, Wayward Arcadium, if you miss it, guess what? It's coming back. Season two sometime in August. We're going to be doing some announcements. Uh, We're already working behind the scenes on season two. We're really excited about it. Um, Also, I believe yesterday just dropped another episode of Queen Court's Games, uh, the All Night Society. If you listen to it, your boy is uh, doing some more Vampire the Masquerade podcast. You can check that out on Spotify. Uh, Of course, Wes underscore IRL on Fridays. Unfortunately, I'll be in San Diego Pride this weekend, so I will not be able to be a giant guy swinging a sword. Uh, But but more announcements as we can do it. And as always, I'll see you here. Same Nat time, same Nat channel for Edge of Legend. And before I forget, as always, huge shout out to our amazing TD, Joe. Joe, you are the best. Seriously, amazing work tonight, my man, as well. Love you so much. Thank you so much. We couldn't be here without you. Uh, 
Now, time for the raid. And we are going to be raiding. Hold on, I, I had this hero zone. Yeah, we're gonna be raiding hero zone. I think I think we said earlier in the chat that goop had to goop. be goop chat. chat. I thought it was goop, goop chat. chat. Goop chat. Goop chat. Goop yeah. chat. Yeah. Let's shout goop chat at them and look at them curl away in confusion and horror. I love that. <laughs> yes. All right. Cool, cool. Starting the raid. Here we go. We're going to do a goop chat raid. Oh, today was crazy. Goop. And thanks again for the level five hype train. Everything you saw was because of that and the love and these amazing performers and the amazing TD. All right. Yeah. Here we go. We got it going now. We're going to be raiding in three, two, one. 